Father is tune in to Sinetic cause he the protector of the gods. I'm talking about Dr. Benjamin, use of your cannon and done it. Yeah, yeah. We got a scale of my odd if he light as a feather, let's go on way his heart. I am a shrine of Patab, you can say I am better recognize a god. All I see is pseudos and frogs. Kudos to my dogs. I'm shit judo for you frogs. I think it's time to hop off the environment. Oh, you didn't know? Oh, you didn't know? It's environment tough. Oh, you didn't know? It's environment tough. Oh, you didn't know? It's environment tough. Knowledge on the rise, raising consciousness divine to the truth. We subscribe. Jabari leading the way. Shaka, I'm most gonna play. So I never done open the gates and up and banging the day. It's a family for the culture, rebuking all your vultures. Some environment full of soldiers, unlock your mind, they'll expose you. Ain't your kids a squad, debating the changes and nod. Watch when you step in the pod or the tear you apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all already know what it is. It's environment time. Let's get this thing going. We got the tickets on sale right now. Um, I think um, I'm going to tell you what I really believe and feel. I think that Unk really might be in over his head. Sekou is in the laboratory and he is studying hard right now. This is his first debate on the HOK. So I think Unk might be in over his head. And I know Unk believes that... um, you know, science is everything. But I think it's going to be a major upset. And I believe that um, Sekou will be victorious. I'm going to make a side bet with Unk. And I'm going to bet Unk that Sekou, and I'm going to put up the um, the joint. Lord Abba, who you got on this one right here with Unk and Brother Sekou, Lord Abba? Who do you got on this one? Brother Unk is saying that spirituality cannot exist at the same time as science. He's saying science over spirituality. But if that's the case, we wouldn't even have science. Our people are spiritual by nature. And I'm I'm, I'm surprised that Unk is, is doing this right now. Our people are spiritual by nature. I, I see you saying that's a tough one, but you are an educated man, Lord Abba. And if you really put your mind to it, you can make a decision right now, just like me. I'm saying Sekou will be victorious in this debate because before you can even deal with anything else outside of the spirit, you got to first be spiritually in tune and tact with yourself, with your body, with your mind. See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? You got to first be spiritually connected with yourself before you can step out. And I'm going to ask y'all a question. Check this question out. Let me ask y'all a question. I ain't never seen nobody um, do this yet. Let me get rid of the banner. Let me see. Let me move the banner so y'all can see who's up here talking to you. Let me move this. Okay. Got on my Sarah shirt today. You know it. So, uh, spiritually connected. You got to be spiritually connected with yourself before you can move on. All right? Oh, man. Let me get this back. Yeah, there we go. I think Unk, Unk is my brother. Y'all know I love my brother Unk. And Unk is a scientist. But the mistake I think Unk is making 
is that he's trying to separate science and spirituality saying that they can't coexist at the same time. And I'm saying, no, brother, they can coexist at the same time. You could be scientific and you can also be a spiritualist. You could be dealing with spirituality. See, we a lot of us get caught up with religion. Spirituality and religiosity are two different things here. All right? When you're dealing with your spirituality, you're dealing with the oneness of yourself. It's not open to the public. Your spirituality deals with the inner you, yourself, your spirituality. Let me ask y'all a question. Dulcinea, I see you in the chat. Peace to you. All right. Uh, here's a question for y'all. How come, and I'm going to throw this out there, and I would like to see somebody answer this. How come, have y'all noticed I did that purposely. I yawned perfectly. I usually go like that and hide it, but I did it purposely. Shout out to Aboriginal Power. Peace to you, brother. Why do, when you yawn, someone next to you yawn right behind it? It's always like that. Or if, even if you're on the internet and you're on a phone call, and the person could be miles away and you hear them yawn on the phone and you yawn right behind it. Do anybody know why is that? And I'm quite sure all of us up here saw that or we know that. Why is that? Can anybody answer that question? Anybody? Come on. Come on, you scientist that's out there, Unc. Yeah, <laughs> see? When I yawn, I'm quite sure somebody out there yawned right behind me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why is that? I didn't say it was because of spirits. I didn't say that. I'm asking a question. Huh? Huh, Sister Freedom? Why is that, Sister Freedom? And I'm quite sure you've seen that too. Like when someone yawned next to you or you yawn, you always see the next person do it. Contagious? Why is that? Not spirituality? I didn't say it was. I'm just asking the question. Pseudosciences. We need to get into that and find out. No one was able to come up with justification for that. Oh, boy. Now, I know someone just yawned right behind me. I know someone just yawned right behind me out there in the, street, in the world on these YouTube streets. Can anybody tell me what that is? Nobody could tell me. I think it got something to do with spirit. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, sorry, you pseudo as hell. All right? But anyway, we're going to move forward, and I'm going to give y'all a classic beatdown that our champion do to all these people. Without any further ado, I bring to you the debate between where's it at? Between Jabari and Top Cat. How many of y'all saw that? A lot of people missed it. What's going on with you, brother? Peace, peace. Shining one time, man. You just coming here to uh, show and prove, man. I work easy work. Oh, man. You you showing easy work. I mean, it's like you you already um not even showing no respect for your opponent. This is the biggest fight of your career on YouTube, brother. Well, it might it might <laughs> uh it might seem that way, but uh, after the night, y'all are gonna see um uh, a different uh, story. Yeah, it's gonna be a yeah, different story, yeah. huh? Yeah. I ain't well, right you know, you know, people say Jabari gonna win. So, 
All right. Well, you already know he is considered the Floyd Mayweather of the conscious community, brother. Do you know that? Yeah, you know, I'm up and coming uh uh hard here today, man. And uh <laughs> yeah, man, it's time to uh sweep the broom and get a real chiefs and room. That part. Oh man, all right. You coming and talking your talk. Well, anyway, brother Jabari, what's up with you, my brother? Are you ready for this? I told you, do not sleep on this young soldier right here, this young warrior. He puts in work. He he gets busy. Are you ready for this, brother? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Well, certainly I'm ready, family. I, I just want you to know that um, brother Jabari has been uh, really looking to talk more about some of what I will say is a confusion that we hear from folks in what is sometimes called the Abel community, the Aboriginal community, the Native Indian community, as, as Brother uh, Big Chief calls it. Uh, I really do think that it is dangerous. I think that it's not based in history. I think it's not based in science. And um, respectfully, I think that uh, uh, my, my good brother Big Chief is going to have uh, his hands full tonight, as he as he probably has to imagine that he does. Of course, on his channel, he was promoting this as the as the debate of the decade. So <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, okay, if okay. he thought it was going to be light work, he would have introduced it that way. Let me also right. say one other thing to you, Sonetta. Folks, you're looking at this and saying, where is Jabari? Nah, Jabari ain't nobody is saying that, brother. I'm going to say, will? I'm in Florida. Okay. I have a I have some some work to do in Florida, some lectures to do in Florida, but I would not miss this conversation for the world. Okay. So I'm here and ready. Let's get it. Do Dr. Anika know you out there in Florida? Of course she does. What <laughs> you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the doctor, uh, uh, Dr. Anika. <laughs> hey, you know, I got Captain in the uh, chat room talking about he got smoked already. Cut that out, so He's yeah. telling me to cut it out. I'm going to just say, number one, uh, Top Cat is definitely a heavyweight contender. Hebrews, he is not a Hebrew. He is not a lightweight. And Jabari is about to find out. But because you are the champion, Jabari, J Jabari, he went through damn near every Hebrew he faced. He cut him down to size. He took down to Zariak. To Zariak was a standing tall tree. He cut the trees. He cut to Zariak down and brought him down to his size. Tazariak started talking about penises. This was not a goddamn <laughs> penis debate. You know, these guys are infatuated with the penis. And, but, yeah. you know, it was not a penis debate. Jabari killed Captain Tazariak. It was a, a three-round knockout. Captain is still my captain. He's my brother. He's my man. But, um, you know, he beat, he beat everybody he faced. This is why he is the Floyd Mayweather. Now, we're going to move forward. Being that he is the champion, legendary, you're going to have to go first. We're going to give you some time, like three minutes, to open up. This is an opening. Let us know what this is about, what you're about to do. This is not the, this is not the first round. This is just the opening to get the people familiar and to sway them into what you're about to do to Jabari and the information. Go ahead, brother. I'm going to give you the time. It starts when you start talking. All right. You're saying, time. Hold up. What you say, Jabari? You're saying Big Chief is talking, right? Yes, Big Chief. Okay. You got three minutes for your opening, brother. All right, turn it one time. All right, man, I'm going to start out like this here, man. Our work easy work. Um, <laughs> what we come here to talk about today is the pan African. Now, Jabari opened up and he said that the Aboriginal indigenous community is dangerous. Uh, well, it's the reason why he said that. Because up until now, they've just been having their way. They've been having their way uh, with colonization. Uh, the pan Africans have been the, the, the truth of the matter is the pan african has been running around here with the white man this whole time. They have turned the white man into the devil, made him our enemy, and the whole time they've been side, way, side by side with him through colonization. Today we will show and prove that the pan african is in fact a Christian organization and that they have been running with the uh, white man the whole time. Uh, it's something real interesting that they want to take out of history. Uh, they want to take out the black European. Uh, they'll tell us that the Moors ruled Europe for 700 years, and in 1492 they was kicked out, and then all of a sudden ain't no more black people in Europe. They like us to believe that the white man came and colonized Africa and the Caribbean when there's no white tribes in West Africa. Very, very interesting. Uh, the Pan-African movement has done absolutely nothing for the quote-unquote black community. They have done absolutely nothing but fed their pockets 
in their bellies, in the bellies of their uh, 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 partnership with the white man. Uh, we were showing proof that uh, Africana studies is, is created after colonization. It was created after colonization to tell the story of the victim. Now, we all know that the victor tells the story. Well, that's all the Pan-Africans have been doing because all they have been doing is telling the story. They have yet to prove us anything. They use the white man's science to validate their place in America. They tell us about all of these Africans in America, all of this culture, this history. But the fact is, all of this is fairly new, uh, 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 Africans in America and, and this here. But like I said, it's the, it's the colonizer telling the story. Uh, I guarantee you tonight, Jabari come here to do story time. He's not going to have any sources. He's not going to be able to prove anything. And if he do, it's going to be from the white man. I feel like it's going to be a very, very simple and easy debate. And when we come out of this, we will see that the white man and the Pan-African have been the colonizer this entire time. Bars. Man, he's um letting go 30 seconds of his time. He still got time. Also, we are showing proof that the American Indian, the American Indian is the indigenous people here in America, and Jabari can't prove to us that the African was here. Big bars. Mm, damn, man. He, he ain't playing no Bang, 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 bang. Brother Jabari, it is on you, my brother. You got three minutes in this um opening argument here. Let the people know what it is you are here to prove, brother. Time will start. When you start. Hey, everybody go on mute when you're not talking. Go ahead, Brother Jabari. All right. Now, folks, I, I want to really be clear that what you heard from our dear brother, Chief, Big Chief, was basically a word salad. I, I, they were almost, they almost weren't even sentences. <laughs> I don't even know. Let, let's just start with the first thing he said that he was wrong. He said that I said the aboriginal community is dangerous. That's not what I said. I said that the idea of the aboriginal is dangerous. And I think that what we have to be clear about is that when a man is confused, a man can actually be used to work against his own interest. And I want to say that this idea that these black dusky individuals that live in the new world are not those people of African descent, not those people who gave civilization to the world, not those people who gave DNA, their own blood to the world, and also not those people who were forced to create the Western world. When you do that, you become confused. And, and clearly, if you don't understand how confused our dear brother is, just recognize that he calls himself an American Indian. Native people are shying away from the word Indian as it, as it is, because the reason why that folks got called Indians is because Christopher Columbus had no idea where he was. Native peoples didn't call themselves Indians. He thought he was in India. And Big Chief is so confused that he would like to use a word that has been completely repudiated. He said that I'm not going to be able to show you that Africans come from Africa. He's also said that Africans, there are no white tribes in South America. What does that even mean? I don't, I don't even know what that means. That doesn't make any sense. I hope you heard that it didn't make any sense. That there were no African Europeans. What does that mean? There are no African Europeans. There are Africans all over the world. All over the world. And so we have to understand that when you come to this misunderstanding of who you are, there is no way for you to understand what you must do. Imagine if you woke up yesterday, uh, today, and you had no remembrance of what you did yesterday. What would you do today? How would you move powerfully into your future? I'm going to say to you, brother, that this extremely ahistorical, unscientific, confused mismatch that you would like to place on our people must end. The African world must unite. If Africans have a unified understanding of who we are, we will once again be 
the people at the form forefront of human civilization. And All so right. I will end this confusion tonight. All right, beautiful man. <laughs> Bang, 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 bang. All right, if you got a PowerPoint, um, legendary top cat, it's your time to load that joint up. We're gonna give you eight minutes as you as you loading it up. I want to give my young brother out there in Chicago. These brothers are trying to get on their promotional thing, and um, they doing big things out there in Chicago. They're not picking up guns. They out there doing the work, and they out there becoming an entrepreneur. And as my brother. Legendary Top Cat, get ready and load up his ammunition. All right. I want to give you all some powerful information from these young brothers. It's less than a minute. What's up, y'all? This is Kenny coming at y'all with my brand new clothing line, True Legacy. Right now, we got the tees and we got the hoodies. We got many different colors. We have more products coming real soon. Check us out at truelegacyclothing.com. Use the code LEGACY21 for 20% off your first order. Through this clothing line, we encourage all our supporters to continue grinding and hustling despite the opposition, despite the circumstance, and eventually form your legacy. Shout out to Sada and the Studios for the support, and I appreciate y'all's support. Peace and black power. The support, man, my family made sure that I knew this. Uh, Al Edwards, Mr. Juneteenth. You don't get Juneteenth without Al Edwards. Uh, this is my grandma's first cousin. His blood is flowing through my veins. Uh, Buck Cobra Franklin and also, uh, uh, he was a lawyer and he represented the uh, survivors of the Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, uh, Black Wall Street. Also, uh, Osceola, Seminole uh, American Indian leader during the Second Seminole War. Turned up one time, man. Shout out to Osceola, man. A lot of stolen legacy down there. Shout out to my seminary in Muscogee Creek, out there. Uh, right here, man. This is my this is my second great grandma. All right, and uh, my grandma gave me this, and uh, this is our history right here. Our family was chiefs of the Kashada tribe. The third band of Indians was Chief Migos. The area where they live was uh, uh, the area where the Mingos live. This is my family right here, the Mingos. Hold up, let me do something. Let me know if you need me to stop your time. You want to know your whole ancestry tree, and you want to learn as much as you can where your grandma lived. Uh huh. And I hate to say that because I don't ever want to see the day when Fox has got to go. But one day I'm going to be gone. You got to document the information I give you. All this stuff in my head, I need to write it down. Here's a picture. I have to show. All right, so I just want to uh, turn it off right there. That's my family teaching me the importance of genealogy and bloodline and understand who you are and where you come from. And can't nobody, don't let a pan-African colonizer take that from you. All right, let's walk. Uh, they like to tell us that the white man did this, the white man did that. The fact of the matter is that the 13 colonies were founded by melanated people from Europe, uh, raw bloodlines. Also, they never tell you in, in, in Africana studies about the free Negro slaves. They don't talk about the slaves in the colony, the, the plantation owners in the 13 colonies. They, they never tell us about the, the black Confederates, the black Ku Klux Klan. They never talk to us about these things. What is this idea of this Afrocentric back to Africa uh, uh, mindset come from? This connection of Africa and Americans come from? Well, uh, uh, it comes out of uh, Paul Cuffey. He was one of the first people to come out and, and speak about this here. Paul Cuffey, if you read his history, they, they try so hard to tell you that they're African. This is my thing. If these people are African, please tell us something African about them. Because when we go into their story, the only thing we find is European. Everything about them is European. So uh, right here, man, they was over in Cuddy Hump. If we come right here to Pelage Slocum, this is the person that supposedly owned uh, his imaginary father. We know nothing about his, his father. We have no records on him. But what we do have is Peleg uh, Gow. This guy was a part of the Society of Friends, which was a Quaker organization, okay? So you have the white Quakers and you have the black Quakers. They walk. And so Paul Cuffey family was a part of this. They was high ranking in the Society of Friends. Paul Cuffey went over to, uh, to, to Sierra Leone, the first British colony. And guess what he do? He went over there. He didn't go start an African lodge. No, sir. He went and started the Society of Friends over, the Society of Friends over there, a, a European organization. 
a European organization. And on top of that, they was in Dortmund, uh, enslaving Indians. Okay, this is a slave owning family, Pan African. Pan African. Let's talk about it. They tell us about George Washington, all the founding fathers, but they never told us that we had quote unquote black founding fathers. I wonder why they don't teach us this in Pan Africanism. Uh, James Ford, founding part of the United States of America. How in the hell are you a founding part of the United States of America and you ain't no colonizer? Because they now one of them picked up a rifle, a bayonet, or anything, and, and got blood on his hand from a white boy. And they try to come out here and give it to us in a revolutionary spirit. But these guys are pastors. Okay? These guys got the Holy Bible in their hand. They don't have no Arishas or Boutes or none of this shit in their hand. They made all that up too. But listen, they got the Bible. They have the Bible. And so when I tell you that Pan Africanism, their foundational base is Christianity. Damn, Big Chief, why you to say that? Because when they split from the white boy, it wasn't because the white boy called him a nigga. It wasn't because the white boy said, I hate you. It wasn't because he slapped his mama or enslaved his mama or raped or any other, or that other fake shit that they teach you in Africana studies. But it was because the white boy didn't want him around him. Okay? So they say. But anyway, Richard Allen was in the wrong place on a particular day in 1792. The white boy said, you got pews outside. And they split up. Got an attitude. Didn't want to leave fast enough. The white boy put his hands on him, and none of them niggas in there helped him. All right, that's what Pan African do to you. That's what Pan Africanism do to you. But anyway, they fell out over Jesus. Okay, bars ain't no way around there. You ain't nothing you can do about it. They fell out over Jesus, so they said we got to go split. We got to go split. And you wonder why our community leaders are only pastors and masons. Still to this day, they're only pastors and nations. You know why? Because one of your black founding fathers, European uh, 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 society of friends, nigga, coming from a slave owning family as well, him and Richard Allen as well. Let's turn up. Absalom Jones became the first pastor, okay? Became the first pastor in America. And then you see your, your Reverend Martin Luther King. He made the way for your Reverend Al Sharpton and your Reverend Jesse Jackson. Pan-Africanism. Ain't never fought the white man, but we see him working side by side, telling us he don't have the power to stop this white boy from all doing right, what he's going to. Let's walk. You know what they all masons? Because real quick, real quick, Titans TV, Titans TV. Peace to you, brother. This is Arnetta. I'm trying to find the best way to contact you. Do you have WhatsApp? I need some connection out there in France and the UK. Do you have WhatsApp? I'm trying to set up a debate in the UK and you get boots on the ground. So you will be our contact for that. Um, you know my email. I'm going to put my email in. Put my email in, please. Um, Yes, yes. Okay, Titans. I need you to contact me or I got to find a way to contact you. Please hit me up, brother. Hit me up. Let's find a way. There go my email right there. Let's find a way. We got to get this thing popping, man. We should have been doing this. And I will be trying to take a visit to the speaker's corner, but I need to talk to you so I can get all the inside, inside information, brother. Peace to you. Good to see you, man. They also was a part of the uh, Masonic Lodge when uh, uh, Prince Howard them opened their doors. Guess what? Reverend uh, uh, Absalom Jones was grand worshiping big, uh, and uh, Richard Allen was the goddamn treasurer. Okay? So they got your, you got your, your, your free African society going to come out of that as well. What they talking about, you niggas need an identity now. You need an identity. They got to give you an identity now, right? Not to mention, okay, so let's deal with this Allen guy. They said he was enslaved by Benjamin Chu. Okay, do you know who Benjamin Chu uh, mentor was? It was William Allen. Okay, the mayor of Philadelphia, he ran Philadelphia. Powerful his family in Philadelphia uh, since, uh, and he became the youngest grand, uh, uh, grandmaster. Uh, he put Benjamin Franklin on, Thomas Paine, a lot of these guys who became uh, big time people in America, the Allen family put them on. You know, goddamn slave, prove it, prove it. You niggas are capped. So just like they white daddy, they pan African ass nigga, want to be a mason just like they daddy, okay? That's why they can't help. You know what else they did? These bourgeoisie had good talking, good King English speaking that nigga. I don't speak good King English. I'm an Indian, homie. Oh, uh, black abolitionist, the National Negro Congress. Okay, 1830, man. 
they put together this Congress. Guess where it happened at? In the AME church. Because all of this, this savagery and all of this goddamn colonization is going to go down through the AME church. Why they ain't going to get them an African church? Why ain't no African guards in there? Why they got you niggas praising Jesus? In the Pan-African community trying to ride and tell us that the white man and Jesus, the black church is what did this to it. Well, damn, here goes your black church right here. Your origins are Pan-African. 1830, they put together all these bourgeoisie-ass niggas in America, met up in Philadelphia at Mother Bethel in the church, and they discussed moving you niggas' ass to Liberia, Canada, or wherever you can go, wherever, what first thing smoking. They wanted you away from here. Why? Not they. I, where was they? I did. Them and the white boy. But they said, Time, brother. Time. Hey, white boy, me, can y'all leave? All Hell right. no, Time. Can leave? We ain't going nowhere. All right, you know what else they did? All your HBC. Time, stuff. brother. Time, you can't hear me? Okay, all right, my bad. Turn That's why I said, I said, I gave y'all the option. Do y'all hey, want 10 yeah, minutes yeah, or 10 eight minutes? minutes? I said that. <laughs> Do you want to give them another two minutes, Jabari? Absolutely. <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, brother. You got two more minutes, so we can do the ten minutes. Nothing. Let's walk. I bet you. I bet you won't come back and prove what I said was wrong. Uh, the ABC brother, it's on you. You got. You could keep going. Go ahead. Time uh, will start. Up. The Port Royal experiment in '65. The Union defeated uh, the Confederates down there. They took over the Sea Islands. Well, they instrumented the Penn School down there, which is all this shit is Quaker. Instituted the Penn School. And down there, they use that blueprint to come through the South. After they leave out of there, they'll create HBCU. Guess who helped them? The goddamn AME church, okay? The goddamn AME church. The great migration, Big Mama House got sold and y'all land got stolen in the South. Well, it was the AME church that convinced y'all to leave out of there. During the 20th century, AME church active in civil rights. Y'all told y'all this these civil rights ass niggas, these pan African. They got people to leave their property and go to Kansas and work for money out there. And then in the HBCU, you know what else they do? They talk this African shit, but they're out there pledging European on them. They had their pledge in European, not only here, but they then took it on the road to Africa with them, another British colony. They also, in, in Sierra Leone, they got the first ground. God damn, Top Cat is coming in. He ain't playing no games. <laughs> Top Cat, Top Cat is not playing games. He's saucing up. Rob Bourne, I'm going to tell you, be careful what you ask for, beloved. Be careful what you ask for. Top Cat is in the building going at our champion. He going at the best of the best. So Rob Bond, man, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. I'm a school through a missionary program. Also in goddamn, uh, well, not in uh, uh, Lagos, the motherfucking name after the church. And then the father of Nigeria nationalism, he brought the Democrats and the politics out there. Also comes from a European family as well, the, the Matthew Lay family, Scottish Irish ass shit. I uh uh I, I land right there. You got 43 seconds, bro. Okay, I right, turn up the American Colonization Society. So this these Quakers, they wanted to get these niggas away from them and find them away. Cause why? Because they wanted our land here in America for themselves. They wanted our land for themselves, and these black European ass niggas helped them. When I come back in the second round, I will I will show you and provide the evidence without a shadow of a doubt that these Pan-African niggas helped them to try to colonize the land from the indigenous Americans. Bars. All right, man. Uh-oh. It's going down, Jabari. I hope you ready for this. First round, Jabari, you got eight minutes in this round. The time will start when you start, my 10 brother. minutes. You got 10 minutes. I mean, 10 minutes. My bad. Thank you. You got 10 minutes in this round. The time will start when you start, Brother Jabari. It's Let's hear this, this pastor preach. Hey, and I need you, I need you, legendary Top Cat, to tell your people to please stop spamming the chat. We know they love you, brother, but tell them to stop spamming the chat because, you know, they fuck, they mess it up when they do that. Let your people know, brother. Go ahead. Hey, y'all, we're going to, uh, hey, uh, we're going to stay dangerous, but, uh, you know, if y'all spam, wait, when you say they spamming, what do you, what you mean they doing? Um, they spam in the chat. Um, they know what spamming means. I'm a little off with that too, but my people is hitting yeah. me up, let me know to tell your people because you know we respectful over here when Jabari well, we, debate. We're gonna be respectful too, yeah, but when you Jabari know, debate, we, we don't do we nothing don't to mess up nothing. You know the media, we wild Indians. So. Yeah, we see the arrows flying. It's all good. We love it. Right. Arrows flying, feathers um, flying, we love it. It's good. Brother Jabari, time will start when you start, brother. I, I, I'm not even exactly sure where to start. 
saw that because <laughs> I don't know whether Big Chief made an argument. Oh, I thought man. he was going to try to explain how the um, Pan Africans actually have led to confusion, but then he well, didn't. Hold talk on, brother. Him. I can't let you just talk, brother. I mean, whatever you want to do to respond to that, you got 10 minutes in this round, brother. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. Start me. Start okay, me, brother. Let's get it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't even know. I mean, it, it he didn't talk about any Pan Africans. Pan Africans. He he talks about the AME Church, pastors, Masons, and he thinks that that means that I I don't know what he thinks it means. Just because they're pastors and Masons, what does that mean exactly? Then he even said some really confused things. They started the AME Church. Why didn't they start an African church? Does he not know that AME stands for African Methodist Episcopal? I, I, I'm confused. Now, you are talking to a comedic priest, a practitioner of ancient African spirituality. So let's be clear, I'm not here to convince anyone that they should be Christian or belong to a church. That is not what I'm doing. But I want to be clear that this brother was supposed to be talking to us about Pan-Africanism and about how we can prove that the, the dusky individuals who live in this land, let's call them black people, are natives. And I don't think he did any, I'm not sure what he did. I, I'm, the, once again, this is a word salad and it, it doesn't make sense. He says that 13 colonies were founded by melodated people. Source? He says that there was the black KKK. Source? He shows us that there are some people of African descent that have Native American uh, descent. So? So? Uh, 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 did you get the impression that I was going to say or that anyone was going to say that there aren't people that have, don't have mixed parentage? I, none of what he said has anything to do with the topic or generating an argument for himself. So what I'm going to end up having to do is just talk about the topic. And I hope you understand <laughs> that I would, in some ways, I would like to actually respond to what he said. But to be very frank with you and respectful to you, Big Big Chief, you didn't say anything. You didn't say anything. There are many, many ways that we know that these people that we call Black are people of African descent. And if you'd like to critique the Pan-African movement, fine, you can critique the Pan-African movement. But I'm not even sure how that has anything to do with whether people view themselves or Afri as Africans or as Native people. What does that have to do with it? What if the Pan-African movement was horrible? What if I stipulated that to you, which I would not? What would that have to do with who we actually are? But even then, you haven't even mentioned a Pan-African. Who would say that Martin Luther King was a Pan-African leader? Jesse Jackson was a Pan-African leader. Paul Cuffey was a Pan-African leader. You are the only one, Big Chief, and this is because you have not studied Pan-Africanism. And second of all, you're talking about what Africana Studies teaches. I would love for you to even tell us one institution that teaches Africana Studies. I want you to be really clear that I have a degree in Africana Studies. So I know a little thing about Africana Studies. I mean, I, 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 this, this was really um, kind of confusing. I'm not exactly sure why he led off that way. Let's just talk about Pan-Africanism really briefly. Let's do that. Um, because what I'd like to do is perhaps get to the point where you're able to understand the challenge of what he's describing. Let's do this. I'm going to do this very quickly, Son Editor. Let me just start here. And and certainly there's more that I can say. Can you see this screen from Black Pass, um, Son Editor? Please yes, we know. see it. It's up. I usually have one, two screens. I have only one. Well, I thought he was going to talk about the Pan-African Congresses. I thought he was going to talk about the origin of Pan-Africanism. He didn't do any of that. He, I, I'm not sure why. Uh, most people would say that some of the earliest adherents to Pan-Africanism would be Henry Sylvester Williams, who actually came from Trinidad. And when he arrived in London, tried to actually encourage Africans in the diaspora to unite and to work for a common aim and towards the betterment of the community. Another major, major 
um, uh, functionary in early Pan-Africanism would have to be W.E.B. Du Bois, who actually was so um, enthralled with Pan-Africanism that he actually ended up living in Ghana. Now, I want to be really clear with you that Du Bois, while he's an impressive intellectual, does not come with his own challenges because he had also lots of disagreements with other leaders that we can consider Pan-African. And clearly, I am referring to perhaps who I would call the prince of Pan-Africanism, Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Clearly, these are those individuals that we should consider Pan-African. And I really don't understand why he didn't mention any of them, but then wanted to talk to you about pastors and masons. What does it matter if you, they're pastors and masons, black pastors and masons? What does it matter if they had any role or any affiliation with the Quakers? I, how does that advance your argument? What is the argument that you are making? The only answer that we can have at this point is none. You are making no argument. You are making no argument. All I heard was an assault of profanity with no substance. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure why he thought that that was a successful argument, but clearly he did. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm confused. I really am a little confused. I don't know why he believes that that is a successful way to argue against Pan-Africanism. Let me do this really quickly. Um, I'm not going to spend all my time on this. I do want to show you some of the sources, some of the ways that we know that Africans are actually, um, how we know that people of African, uh, Black folks are people of African descent. Let's do that a little bit. Come on now. Here we go. Working with a, a different system today. I'm sorry. Here we go. Let's just, let's look at this for a second. I think one of the challenges is that um, people who are part of the Aboriginal movement, either they manipulate and, and just really just mangle the history of the African, or they don't read it at all. There's a lot of, re there are tons of reasons why we know that the African, the Black person in the United States and in the West is an African. We know this through eyewitness accounts of Africans. We know this through eyewitness accounts of Europeans and, Ta and the Tomhu. We know this through the Papal Bulls. The Papal Bulls were those documents that were written by the Vatican in order to acknowledge that they were doing something absolutely inhumane to those people on the continent of Africa. We know this through international treaties and foreign affair laws. We have records of war between Africans and Europeans. We have enslavement artifacts. We have artifacts of Africans who actually are clinging to Africa after being forcibly removed from it. We even have linguistic evidence. Take a look at some of these acts. We have the Slave Trade Act of, um, of 1794, the Slave Trade Act of 1807, so on, so on, and so on. I'm talking quickly because we have very little time. We actually know that there are lots of wars that describe the enslavement of the African, and they were very clear who they were enslaving. The British sinking of the Spanish Armada in 1588, the battle over who would be able to enslave and actually rape the, the mineral resources of Africa. We know that Queen Nzinga fought against the Portuguese. We see an image of Queen Nzinga on the, on the right. There are artifacts. Look at the artifacts of our enslavement. Why are these here? Why are they on the Western continent of uh, the Western continent, the Western coast of Africa, and also in the, the New World, the West? Why do we see them if nothing happened? How about the remains of enslaved people? Some of them, when you go to, for example, the African burial ground here in New York City, you'll see the African beads that they thought were so important to them. Take a look at lot B340. Please do some research on this. Um, I'm not going to talk about that part of it yet because it would take too long. Here goes a, 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 a bill of sale. And it says here, this is from 1763. On Thursday, uh, aft arrived from the coast of Africa, the Brig Royal Charlotte, a parcel of extreme fine, healthy, well-limbed Gold Coast slaves. They're telling you where they got them from. We see these ads throughout the, the world. Take a look at this one. Here's another ad for the ship Juba, which says that it came during the African um, tra tra trafficking Africans. This was from Bristol. 
in the UK on May 1787. You're looking at the ads themselves. Unlike Big Chief, these are the sources. He gave us nothing but his opinion, which was wrongfully obtained. How about the description of the ship Catherine that says that it actually had 180 tons per register. It was a prime sailor fit for the African or South Sea trade. How about that? Well, I'm not going to go on to this part now. Um, I want you to also understand that we have lots of records and the actual um, uh, 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 wrecks of, of enslavement. All right, ships. brother, uh, Tom. You didn't give me any... any um... Bro, okay. I've been showing yeah, it on the screen all the time. You, you got you to gotta know, know I see it. it. I, I, I can't see the screen, brother. Oh, I can't I, see the screen. You got to give me a... No, I no, you can see, see the screen. You just wasted your time. Hold on, Jabari. No, no. Wait, hold Jabari, on. hold on for one minute. You yeah. hold up. You don't see this right now. You don't see this, Jabari. No, but brother, brother, when I'm doing the presentation, <laughs> I can't see the screen. Usually, oh, I, I have got two you. Screens. I see what you're saying. I only have one today. So open up another yeah. window, brother. Open up another window. You can open another window, but you no have excuses, to share. Jabari. Was, you have to share. There's no excuses, please, no brother. Problem. I'm looking at Hold on, Top Cat. Chill, chill, brother. Chill, brother. Chill. Come on now. There's no excuses. Right. What I'm saying is for the next round, give me some verbal cues. Because I, I got you. I just didn't want to no. interrupt. That's why I, I got you. It. I want to be able to. Top cat, have you been seeing it when I throw it up like this? No, I ain't, I ain't seen it. Uh, okay, so I, I will get both of y'all. You know, while I was doing my presentation, I couldn't see it. But I okay, so yeah, all right. Yeah. So I'll give y'all both verbal um, information right. when the time normally is going that I have Normally, I have two screens, but I'm in a hotel. I don't have right, my two screens. Right. So, okay, yeah. so um, brother Top Cat, load up your ammunition. Second round is coming. Ten minutes will start when you're ready. And let me know, Top Cat, if you need me to stop the time to get to something. Same with you, Brother Jabari. Say, hold the time for a minute. I'll stop the time and then proceed on when y'all ready. So just let me know when you're ready. Also, right, I want to uh, say to the people, family, listen, I'm giving this debate to y'all for free. So feel free to drop some love and give me some love up in the cash app if y'all want to, man. If y'all have something, throw some love up in there, man. All right, brother. Um, Top Cat, are you ready, my brother? All right, turn it one time. I'm ready. Hey, oh, all right. Oh. The time can you see the time now? Why nah, you like nah, that? I'm looking at my presentation. Hold on, hold on. Look, do you see me up on, on the top? Nah, yes, you don't see well, me up top, no. brother. Oh, well, you know what it is, nah, Sonetta? Sonetta, when you when you put forward a PowerPoint, you it has to fill the screen so you can't right. see, you know. With the oh. folks at home can see all three, all four okay. of those windows. But. Okay, so I'll let the folks see it at home, and I'll verbally yeah. let y'all know. I just don't like to interrupt y'all. Brother I got you, Cat, brother. the time will start when you start, brother. All right, turn on one time. First off, let me say that I'm pissed off, okay? Because I stayed up all night putting my shit together, and I was square business about today, and my opponent show up late. Not only is he late, but he show up, and he don't have nothing to put up on the screen. He took that time to Google that weak ass Pan African thing, and I hope he didn't think that I had some for him. And I really appreciated him for setting up the alley hoop, setting up the alley hoop to throw that bitch right off the glass to the big chief, because he brought up three, he brought up three major colonizers, and we're gonna deal with that. Ad. Speaking of colonizers, why do we say they're colonizers? We know they were working with the American Colonization Society. Man, the key word in there is, is colonization. Whenever it's a company, if you walk into a goddamn building and it will, if you walk into a, 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 a you walk into a business, uh, they are letting you know what's going on in the building. So if you was working to the American Colonization Society company, guess what's going to be going on in that motherfucker? A whole lot of colonization. Let's walk. So uh, American Colonization was built by who? Quakers, made up of Quakers. Here this Quaker shit go. They, and, and like like Paul Cuffey, they want to see niggas back to Africa. They had the Society of Friends in uh, London. They had the relief of the poor blacks. They end up sending the loyalists, who was mostly uh, of, of American Indian and Scottish Irish descent, right? And that's the people who the Africans try to get to take their place. But let's walk. Let's see. Uh, now through here. All right. Now let's deal with it. In in uh, 1787, the idea of colonization was not new. He said that Paul Cuffey had nothing to do with Pan Africanism. Well, let's walk. 
Because the same back to Africa ass theory that he running around here trying to push, Paul Cuffey then was pushing it. Put some respect on that man's name. You come out that we had presentation, at least respect the big pan Africans. All right, let's walk. He felt that black people living in America would never be treated as equal and would be better off elsewhere. Who that? I mean, listen to this colonizer shit. He felt, he felt, no, no, that white boy told you to go get the niggas out of here. Now watch this here. James Ford, your other uh, 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 three founding fathers, James Ford, uh, 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 him, uh, Richard Allen, and Absalom Jones. You always see these three colonizing that niggas together when he got something to do with the white boy colonization. Well, anyway, they said they met up in Richard Allen Church, in the in the black church, and they told niggas to go to Africa. And down here, Ford and Road Paul Cuffey and told him there wasn't a single soul that said they was going to go. Ain't that a bitch? When nobody down with that. And so a point that they leave out is the missionary report. Now, you have the... Um, now, when they set up uh, Nigeria, I mean, they set up uh, Sierra Leone. After they set up Sierra Leone, you got the sister company come with Liberia, right? They went over there and colonized Liberia as well. Colonizers. Now, who was instrumental in the funding of this was the Church Mission Society. So let's walk. Uh, this is uh, uh, Crowder, which they tell you that uh, he... Y'all come up with some of the weakest bedtime stories. But anyway, uh, Crowder went out there. He was a part of this here. This night the expedition was to, uh, uh, um, they wanted to uh, goddamn find out the origins of the uh, the Niger River. And, and, and uh, so when they got over, they had a language barrier. And so uh, he was instrumental in helping create the Yoruba, the Igbo, and a lot of these syllabaries so they could create a Bible so they could go there and colonize you niggas at, comparing Africans ain't nothing but Christians. All right, that'll walk us into the uh, Brussels uh, uh, conference. Now, when we get to the Brussels conference, they don't never like to talk about the Brussels conference, but this is coming from the source, the Brussels conference right here. Uh, I can drop that link for y'all. All right, now they say, with the foundation of the 1788 uh, um, African Association of London, right here in this book, they're going to speak about using the blueprint of the African Association. And then we go into the Berlin conference where they call up well, Africa into into slices of pies, and here come these niggas, right? They always this is when they start African studies after that, right? They always tell us about uh 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 um the 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 goddamn I me mean, Berlin conference and the scramble for Africa, right? And then here these niggas come, here these Masonic ass niggas come, uh sons and daughters of the colonizers, all of them family, uh on the plantation somewhere in the goddamn island. But anyway, on, on the on the 24th September, Henry Sylvester Williams, ain't that that nigga they brought up? They say the father of Pan-Africanism. Well, guess what he did? He was instrumental in founding the WHO? The African Association, in response to the European partition of Africa that followed the Congress of Berlin. So they saying that this wasn't, it wouldn't be no Pan-African uh, 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 movement <laughs> without the goddamn uh, 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 Berlin scramble is what they tell us. Mm. These ain't never sons and daughters of colonizers coming mm. to get their slice of the pie. How do we know that? What is the African Association? Let's go back to 1788 when they went over there and put five up minutes. Home. They also instituted the African Association. Five minutes. Up. You say what? five minutes. Go ahead, brother. All right. Uh, it was a uh, uh, African Association. They founded it. This was the uh, Association of Promoting the Discovery of the Interior Parts of Africa. They created every association to go in and colonize Africa. And here these colonizing ass niggas show up with the same name. They used the African Association. They never went nowhere, family, let's walk. Who else was a part of this? Well, here go the other nigga they brought up, uh, uh, W.E. Du Bois, with his colonizing ass, right? He, well, it's a shame what you did to them people in the Philadelphia Experiment. But he got an ancestor that worked for the African Association who was Johan Bocard, okay? Johan Bocard, who worked for the African Association as well, and he ended up dying before he can got down. And then, you know what? He went to college and went over there and played Muslim. Another nigga that went to Africa and played Muslim on their ass was the other father, known, widely known as the father of Pan-Africanism. You know what he did? He met a white boy named Knox, the Protestants, all these Protestant ass niggas. And they and, and Knox, look at him. 1845, he met Reverend Knox, a white American pastor, the Pan African. And then they sent his ass over there to Liberia. Now watch this here. Guess who he's working with? He embraced the ideas of the American Colonization Society, that, that uh, uh, of the American Colonization Society. Not only that, but guess what? The New York Colonization Society paid his way to goddamn Africa. The boy would have never went after if the white folks would have never paid. 
He grew up in a goddamn Jewish church, but he took his ass to Africa and played Muslim. Reform. He go, he go, this other colonizing that nigga right here, Garvey. Why I say that? I went say that if I listen, Garvey, this book right here, Ernest Cox. Okay, this book right here. Ernest Cox wrote a book called White America. What do you want to do? Send niggas ass to Africa. He wanted to out America so he can have our land, our family land, indigenous aboriginals land to himself. In that book on page 59, he said, he says that uh hold on, let me come up. He said a Negro uh, leader will arise. He will be the foremost individuals in annals of Negro history. He will march his people back to the promised land. Who was that? Who was his Negro? Garvey. Guess what? Garvey uh, said, I regard the Klan and the Anglo-Saxon club as, uh, as far as the Negro is concerned, a better friend of the race. Again, I told y'all they've been working with this white boy the whole time. That's why they're trying to send your ass to Africa. Now, you come over here, Ernest Cox. This the nigga who paid him. He's a known racist white supremacist. And uh, the, also they helped him find that uh, 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 black star line, which come from the European white star line. Look at the colonization on that. OK, here go another one of their white daddies right here. Listen, the white Jewish father of African studies dies. Uh, Jabari went sit here and had a degree in African studies if it weren't for this white boy right here. Put some respect on that white pan. Y'all didn't know pan African was a white boy? He got pictures out there in Africa with all them white boys. He was the first one to come tell them that, hey, it's a connection between Africa and, and America. And this white boy said that. Boy, you ain't got nothing to do. Style our motherfucking business, white boy. The pan African let these white boys in. You know what? I had a slide, but I ain't gonna do it. I love John Henry Clark. I love the death. I ain't gonna do it, Pops. I got you. Oh, uh, but this colonized slick head nigga, he come on out here. The father of Gullah Geechee, what's up, man? They stole my family history right here. Real similar, uh, right here. Lorenzo Dow Turner, right? Uh, this him in the white boy, the Pan African. Lorenzo Dow Turner, Melville Hercules, sell scholarly entries and evidence of publication. Uh, he known for the Africanism dialect. Well, he's a linguistic that went around through South America as well, telling them that uh, their language and their culture coming from Africa. Okay, uh, colonizer. Uh, let me say this here before we go into anything else too. He want to come out here and talk about DNA. He wasted all that time, didn't tell us nothing. He don't tell us about the importance of bloodline. He don't tell us where he's fitting this African story. One minute, I one minute, one minute. I opened up and told y'all and showed y'all who my family was. He have yet to tell us anything about this miraculous ass African story. How do he tie in it? You didn't tell us nothing about no Africans. Uh, uh, stay focused as well, brother. And tell us how do you fit in this African story if you want to prove that we are we uh, Africans and not American Indian? Because my family, I just showed and proved that we were. You have yet to show and prove anything, and definitely not how you attached to this African story. The Pan Africans are colonizer, big team top cat. I raised my second round, big bars. All right, all right, my brother Top Cat. That's what it is. Uh oh. All right, my brother Jabari, you got um ten minutes. The time will start when you start. Um, let's get it in, brother Jabari. You got ten minutes in this round. Load up your ammunition. I see it right there. It's up. Time will start when you start, brother. Unmute yourself. I'm not gonna share quite yet. I wanna I wanna say a few things. Um, I'm I. I uh, the problem that we're having is I think that um, Big Chief is not making an argument. Um, he's not made an argument. Um, he's told you that there's some individuals that might have worked with other white people who wanted to go back to Africa. But I, I, I'm not. All right. Real quick, real quick. Everybody, all my mods, all the mods that's in the building, do not delete the comments let the comments stand let them swing back it's all right long as nobody being rude and disrespectful let them bang back as strong as they can just like we do allow the comments to to, look, to go as long as they're not using profanity as long as they're not cursing nobody out let the people live everybody all the mods thank y'all not even, even if I would stipulate that that was the case, and I wouldn't. What does that have to do with the argument? Why does that prove that you are a native Indian as you call yourself? It does not. He told us about his grandmother, who he says told him that he was a Native American, a Native Indian. And I, I wanna, I wanna um, tell Big Chief and, and many of the others in the Aboriginal community how 
lineage works. You actually have four grandparents. Surprise! Even if your grandmother said you were a native um, uh, Indian, are you supposing that the other three, the other three-fourths of your DNA was that too? Brother, you are telling a story that is more fallacious than Sleeping Beauty. This is ridiculous. Even if I would believe your grandmother that you are a Native American, that has nothing to do with the story. He also wants to tell us, by the way, he has to understand the Brussels conference. He means the Berlin conference. The Berlin conference. He continues to talk about the American Colonization Society. I would really love to talk to him more about the American Colonization Society, but to be very honest with you, it has nothing to do with the topic. Simply because there were some Africans who, who believed that maybe they should go back to Africa, that does not make them Pan-Africanist. Do you understand what Pan-Africanism is? Pan means all. And so essentially the concept of Pan-Africanism I would even show you a definition, I don't even know if it's worth it at this point, is that people who are of African descent around the world, he, I, I see the stupidness he's doing, it's okay. I mean, that's that's all he can do. But um, the people who are of African descent around the world believe that they should create a unified platform, a unified agenda for the uplift of those people who are diaspora Africans and continental Africans. That's simply what Pan-Africanism is. That's it. So what does the American Colonization Society have to do with that? One organization. What does it have to do with it? What does Absalom Jones or James Fortin have to do with it? Are you telling me that because you disagree with two individuals, by the way, you have no idea what they did because your description of who they were was poor. I mean, what? even if those two individuals are terrible people, which they were not, how does that advance your argument? You have not advanced an argument yet. And I've sat here and listened to you for 20 plus minutes. Sonetta, I could honestly be sleeping right now because he's not making an argument. He's not making an argument. I showed you some of the ways that we know that people who are considered black are African. That's what I was talking to you about. And you didn't respond to any of it. None of it. Let, let me go ahead and show you a few pieces here. I, I want to I wanna just go ahead and um, do some things that perhaps you're not doing. And, and that's, that's the um, unfortunate thing that, um, you know, it's hard to, to debate a, a person who's not making an argument. He's, he's not making an argument. I, it's on that or this is, <sighs> okay. I want us to, let's take a look at this article, okay? This is a scholarly article that studies the DNA of people of African descent. And I know very well that he's gonna say DNA is irrelevant. Of course he's gonna say DNA is irrelevant because when he does the DNA studies, it is absolutely clear that he is not a Native American. And he- Your PowerPoint sure is up, is up. Say again? Is up, we see it. Yeah, and, and he damn sure is not a Native Indian. I want to be clear that the reason why he's calling himself an Indian is because Columbus believed when he went to the Caribbean, he was in the Indies. And so this dude is so confused that he wants to take the entire movement against Columbus backwards. I'm going to just go down here. We could really talk about how, by the way, this article, which is in um, the, the American Journal of Human Genetics, that's what this is from 1998, um, it actually shows you an analysis of people of African descent and others. And what they were attempting to do is to actually deal with the topic that I believe our dear brother should be dealing with, whether he is actually a quote unquote Indian. I want you to be very clear that this um, study showed that there were less there was less than 1% of the DNA of the African, less than 1% of the DNA of the African was actually native. Did you hear what I said? Less than 1% of the DNA of the African was actually native. 
That's the challenge that we have. When you actually look at an analysis of these studies, you will see that what Big Chief, or whatever he likes to call himself, actually is doing. What he's doing is actually completely confused. I'm trying to find the actual source here, um, the actual uh, quote here, so you can actually see um, where we're going. It's a long article. So you'll actually be able to see that we're at the point where um, this has to end. We have to get to the point where we are able to finally say that these people, that we consider the, the, the Black folk, the Black folk of this land, are actually people of African descent. OK. They're being really generous here. Look at the amount that they say they find of people who are actually um, have native blood. 1.3 to 2.7 in that population. 1.3 to 2.7 of the people they studied in that particular population had Native American blood. I want you to, um, family, this is, a, this is actually a study that is available online. It's not hard to get. I want you to um, take a look at it so that you're able to truly understand how confusing how confused our dear brother is. Um, here's another good article. Look at this one here. This one actually uses some of the sources that are um, commercially um, available. So I don't know how much time is left on the clock. You're, you're muted, Sonetta. You got two minutes and 45 seconds. OK, OK. So if you look here, here goes a, a discussion of some of the um, the, the DNA that is pulled from large numbers of people, some of it comes from 23andMe. This is one of the sources that you see um, with people actually looking for um, their, their DNA, right? Look at this one. In the average African-American genome, for example, it is 73.2% African, 24% European, and can you read this here? Point Eight, that's less than a percentage, Native American. By the way, Latinos have 18% Native American ancestry. Point eight. Big Chief, I'm gonna tell you something that's probably gonna upset you. When you actually look at those pictures of those black ancestors, your relatives that have those long nose noses and, the, and that straighter hair than you would expect, you are seeing something that none of us want to actually deal with. You're seeing European DNA. That's what you're seeing. Big Chief, please, all I've heard is profanity from you tonight. I wanna to speak to you as a brother. I, I really hope that you actually embrace science and history because it will help you understand who you actually are. You are not an Aborigine, no matter how much you put that on that ridiculous feather headdress that you have. You aren't. And I don't care what you say about those individuals that you have mentioned, whether you like them or not, that's irrelevant. That does not create a one minute of you. One minute. By the way, he actually tried to make it sound like the face, the first Pan-African Congress was working with the the um in some strange way, like they were working with Europeans. Where did he get that from? Did he even look to see who are the people on his slide? He called them pastors, pastors, and masons. This is his slide. You know, one of the things that Jabari is going to do when you come against me is I'm going to impeach you with your own sources. Take a look at this is his slide. Don't you see? This is Holly Selassie, Leopold Senghor. These are African rulers here. Where are the pastors and the masons that you called them? Do you even know what you're looking at, dear brother? I, please, make an argument. Because all that's left is foolishness and the ridiculous word salad that you have tortured our people with. All right, all right, man. Uh-oh. Yo, I just got sidetracked. Um, is this the second round coming up? Third round. He down two. Oh, third this is the third down. round. Third round. Okay, uh, pre, uh, uh, Chief, it's on you. The time will start when you start, brother. 
This is the third and final round. Let's go. Man, I'm so pissed off. I thought I was coming out here to debate Jabari. I mean, all now that he's this good, he this and that. This? This was how that was out here for? Really? Nothing. Oh. And then I came out here and steamrolled him. He don't even know what happened to him, right? He gonna have to go play this back in the morning. He don't even, he woke up and he down two already. First off, see, a colonizer, only a colonizer will come to you and tell you who you are after you done told them who they were. They came out here and presented evidence. I didn't want to speak for myself. I got my family to speak for us. Okay, and told you the importance of it. My auntie's 63 years old. Her grandma took her, we have land. We have land in Louisiana, Texas, also South Carolina. We have land in the land of Louisiana. They sent her out there in the, uh, uh, we have burial grounds. Sent out there in the burial grounds. She had to jot all that down and came in and gave her a lesson. She been holding on to that. And that's why she teach us this importance of this. And that way, can't nobody come tell you. See, I don't have to worry about what picture you pulled up of, a, of American Indian. I got big mama right here. Okay, I got big mama right here on my side. Okay, no, sir, Mr. Colonizer. No, thank you. Oh, uh, he said he hope I believe in DNA. Why would I believe in DNA? And that's a tool that the colonizer use. That shit's so fake. Okay, where did that come from? The Royal Society. The Royal Society is the oldest. It's the oldest scientific institute here. And you know who it was created? They got their chart in 1660 by King Charles II. Okay, it is the oldest. I right, turn up one time. What they say? Pan Africans fake DNA. I was hoping you would come here with that bullshit. Again, the African Association. Yeah, they created the African Association September the 24th. Where did they get it from? Well, the African Association changed its name, family. What did they change their name to? They changed their name to the Royal Geographical Society of London. Okay? This is the union of the African Association and the Royal Ge Screen. How about you screenshot that since you want to screenshot shit? Screenshot that. And you know who worked for them? Charles Darwin. This is where your out of Africa theory going to come out of. Okay? From these colonizers. Okay? And his son headed this program. His son was over this. He was the president of the Royal Geographical Society, and he also was over the British eugenics, okay? And then and in Pan-Africanism, they side side by side with that white boy. Again, like I said, that African Association was the African Association, and later, here comes Sylvester Wheat. Because y'all changed to the Royal Geographical Society, he come pick it up right after the Berlin Conference. And oh yeah, and I wasn't wrong. He talking about, I said, I meant the Berlin, not the Brussels. Well, I thought he knew his history. Okay, because before the Brussels, I mean, before the Berlin, it was the Brussels. And before that, it was the African, so international, an international African association. Okay, and that was also by Leopold too. Get your bars up, man. I don't know who you thought you came here to play with tonight, but you ain't gonna preach your way out of this shit tonight. You finna get this work. You been getting this work, you down too. Okay, where did this come from? Who they want us to follow? Just like a Pan-African, they want us to follow the white folks. Okay, in 1987, in 1987, now watch this shit here. Uh, 1987, Rebecca Can, Mark, and Allen uh, published Mitochondrial DNA and Human Evolution. This is where your out of Africa, your E theory, DNA mitochondria come from them. And all of them, and guess what? Allen, top ranking out of the society, uh, uh, the royal society. All of this shit here is by planning to go back to their colony. Listen, King Charles. King Charles II that signed that charter for them, he owned the Royal African Company. Ask Jabari, why do every all of the companies with Africa on it come out of London? Okay, he go this Rick Kittles, he just brought up this shit. This is African DNA shit, right? Well, he got the African barrier ground that he brought up. Well, Howard got a, a 24 million, went from 2.2 to $24 million budget to turn this, this uh, Indian barrier site it's European and Indian, okay? Because when they first got there, they needed a, a, a buffer between the Indians and them, and they gave it to Portuguese because you had the Dutch West Indies Company who settled up there and play me if you want to. We got the bear, we got the uh 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 we we know who they gave it to, the captains. They were melanated, they called them free Negroes. Now he brought out this fake ass uh 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 Saint Kofa. This the barrier ground right here. Now watch what they say. There has been, now they got this fake ass Sankofa symbol on there, right? Now on the barrier ground, it say, uh, it say there has also been some inconsistency regarding the Sankofa. Okay, now hold on, where is it? Uh, the wood coffee. Now this is what they say. It can be safely concluded, an expert in African art at Howard, right? Another HBCU named after O.O. Howard, a white boy. Stop it, Quaker shit. 
And uh, it said it was in Sankofa. But watch this here. The burial ground said 2006 reports rendered that, uh, okay, this, uh, hold on, let me come down. Dr. Seaman finds several problems with the Sankofa identification. He writes, there is no evidence that the clock even existed in the 18th century, early surviving example of the Dinkra clock. Uh, uh, and now come down here, they also chose the Michael Blasey Scientific Director of the African Burial Ground over Sewer. They also say that the, the burial ground, look right here, the burial ground say they are no longer saying that it is, uh, uh, they are no longer saying, okay, so although Siri say African Project backed away from this. So the African burial ground backed away from saying it was Sankofa, okay? And they said, stating only that the design has been interpreted as a Sankofa. Get out of here with that fake ass shit. They interpret it as a Sankofa. There's no, there's nothing in Africa for you. They, Jabari trying to take y'all back to Africa, these pan africa been trying to get you away from your land and take you back to Africa to go there and do what? Because they don't have nothing for you. They don't have no plan for you. You're going to go there as cheap labor the same way they've been doing you here since they've been out of their uh, Negro conventions. Let's listen to this Pan-African lady. Somebody asked the question, African-Americans would like land to start their own country in Africa. Is that possible? Listen to what these Pan-Africans say and tell me do they want to in your in their country. Now, let's talk about one country, one continent, sticking with one point. My hope is when the, when the protocols are cleared and are inclusive of descendants of slaves, African-Americans should be free to pick up and say, where I want to live on the continent. Why would you want to be given land when me, the continent of Africa, I'm not being given land? It now, the people ask them, can we get land if we come back out and give us all these wonderful, glorious ass stories telling us this our land, this our home, is this that? Oh, y'all heard them popping that shit. But then we ask for some land. Can we have some and we go back? Oh, we ain't got nothing. Why would I give you land when and when I ain't got no land? And continental Africans ain't got no land. But damn, is we the redhead stepchild with the flu? Or is we really your brothers and sisters that shoot y'all running around here selling? Hell yeah, nah, we dollar signs to y'all. Dollar signs, that's it. Doesn't make any sense. Let's be realistic here. And which president is there right now? We'll start giving land to African Americans and no land for the people within that. Y'all hear that? What president ain't right now? But damn, y'all come tell us we your brother and sister, the year return, you want us to spend money to come to your dungeon and shit that you ran with the British? It's insane. Acting like Africans didn't sell the slaves that left out of the motherfucker. Like y'all, if, if, if people in a, in a diaspora are Africans, Look at look how disrespectful. First, they sell you off to the white man, and then when you want to come back, you got to pay for it. They ain't got nothing for it. Why would I give you something? Listen to them. Colonize the ass niggas. Picture a situation of an old lady in a village. Do you honestly think uh, uh, someone coming from the United States is more entitled to compensation uh, in, uh, in, in the form of land or some have been asking for mineral concessions and not the old lady in the village? Come on now. Two come minutes. Minute. Two minutes. Let's ask for something. Let's be realistic. Let's, let's not come up and go against the program. The program. The program. What's the program, y'all? Colonization. You ain't even got your own mind, thoughts, and heart out there. They already got you set up for what they want you to do, and that's labor. It's calling all of us to speak with one voice and come home to our Africa. You know what? If you said that you fight yourself, you are feeding yourself into the same mentality from the colonizers the slave master of divide and conquer. The slave master divide and conquer, but I got to come work for you. You don't want me to work for the slave master and the conqueror, but you want me to work for you. Africa has not put out, Pan Africa has not put out a plan for us. They haven't told, they haven't done nothing for you. Look how long they've been around. They've been feeding you this back to Africa shit. They had the AME church on you. They, they brought you your Jesus. They brought you your, that's why all of your pastors, I mean, all of your leaders in our community is pastors and masons. Okay, it started from these people who said that you should leave America and go to Africa. Okay, that was the origins of the Pan-African movement. Started after the scramble of Africa, became the African Association, which was to discover the interior parts of Africa. They went there to colonize it. Again, Jabari has not brought any sources tonight. Jabari has not told us how do he fit in as an African in this story. Haven't showed us nothing. Came here to preach and he got his ass tore off the bone by legendary Big Chief Top Cat. Don't ever disrespect the Aboriginal or Indigenous American Indian no more. Get that Pan-African colonizer shit out of here. What's wrong with them working with the white man? What's wrong with them being slave masters? 
what's wrong with them wanting you to come to Africa and do cheap labor and and and, and uh and uh what what how do you how how dare you come out here and ask to come here and be an African? So we gotta go there and be second class citizens is what you're telling us is back to Africa movement that they've been kicking or uh, Christians and they've been working alongside the colonizer this whole time and got down there has been exposed tonight. Legendary big chief top cat, that's my motherfucking time. Bars. Uh oh! All right, brother Jabari. This is the last and final round. Then we're gonna get into some question and answers. Oh man, Top Cat ain't come to play, Jabari. Top Cat ain't come to play, brother Jabari. Your screen frozen. Um, I really want to show something here. He days. Here we go. Here, put you, your phone on mute. Put it on mute, I brother. You, uh, you know, Top Cat, you need to, you need to, you need to be quiet. Um, you know, I, I, I'm really surprised. Let that me know when you're ready. Did. I can start your time. Yeah, you can go ahead and start. Okay. I'm really surprised that someone who has not made an argument is acting like he actually has done something successful. <laughs> Even if he believes that there's something wrong with the African colonization society, what does that have to do with this argument? How does that make him a Native American? How does he then discount? How does he then discount all of DNA research, all of the history? All of those individuals who are of critical importance in our community, who have done the work, done the study. And then he has the nerve. By the way, a Big Chief, I'm going to tell you that you said that you're upset. You actually played someone that I know well. I know you don't know who you were playing. Her name is Ambassador Aracana. I will be meeting with her next week. You did not let her um, explain what she was talking about. You played her for a few seconds and then you put your own commentary in. I work with Ambassador Aracana. Ambassador Aracana, Jabari Osaze, and Anika Daniels Osaze are going to be installed in the same ceremony on December 11th. I know her well. And so I I'm not sure how you got so confused. Let me show you a few really quick things. First of all, Sonnetta, I'm not at home. I wish I was. Because one of the things that I would do, um, he seems to want me to prove uh, my African lineage. Um, and that's really bizarre. One of the challenges that that um, he'll continue to have is that he's going to have to understand that when we talk about people of African descent, and we look at DNA, he would like us to believe that DNA is ridiculous, but DNA is in fact a, a, a science that will help us understand and link ourselves to other people. So this is just one of the DNA services that Jabari has used, this is Ancestry.com. One of the reasons why I used Ancestry is because they can connect you to a large number of people who you may not know. And I want you to look at this over 300, I'm gonna just scroll down really quickly because I also don't want to jeopardize their, um, their uh, uh, privacy. But when you go down there, you're going to see that there are over 400 people who actually are my relatives. And Sonnetta, something interesting happened when I took the test. It came back and it said to me, this is your first to second cousin. This is Maria Ricardo. Maria Ricardo actually is my father's niece. I didn't know she did the test. She didn't know I did the test. Ancestry.com told me correctly, by the way, that Maria Ricardo is my first or second cousin. I want you to understand that this proves that DNA actually is a science that works. I'm not sure why he thinks it isn't. Well, I do know why he thinks it isn't. He thinks it isn't because he knows what, when he does his DNA, what it will find. And he does not want you to actually look at that. But the reality is, this brother is an, a, is an African, a confused African, but an African. So I want you to see that if DNA was not correct, how did they tell me who my first and second cousin was? 
We didn't uh, check with each other. I didn't know she did the test. She didn't know I did the test. And there are others that I have reached out to on that list. DNA is, in fact, a science. Now, I'm not saying it's a perfect science. There are things that we've learned about DNA and, and trying to connect people's lineages. And I think that some of the science is even better than it was earlier, but that's how science works. But the reality is that when we do DNA studies of people of African descent, we see that very little of their DNA is actually, very little of their DNA is actually native. I'm going to show you this paper again. Why? Because Big Cat, he says I didn't show you a source. In actuality, I showed you a bunch of sources. He just doesn't like the sources. This is a scholarly article, and I want you to see it again. The average African-American genome, for example, is 73.2% African, 24% European, and 0.8% Native American. 0.8% Native American. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing that when we do the science, we find that these confused Africans are just that, confused Africans. And he would like to actually say, speak ill of Africans who did important work, who tried to actually reconnect us to Africa by saying that they were Christian. I'm sorry, most black people in the United States are Christian. This was a tradition that was given to us by our slaveholders. There are many of us who are finding our ways back into other traditions, but simply because they're Christian, especially during the time period that he's referring to, what does that mean? I bet you his grandmama was Christian, the same one that he's mentioning. <laughs> what is he talking about? By the way, this is the truth. This is the truth about Africa. Let me show you this. Um, I don't know if he, I know he doesn't know this, but take a look at this um, screen as well. He's saying that Africans cannot get free land. I don't know if he knows who he's talking to. Please look at this. This is the house that Anika and Jabari are building. It is a bit more further advanced than this. We're hoping that it will be done by the end of the year. But we put this house in Ghana in the Sable region, and we got what, Sonnetter? Did we pay for the land? No. As diasporan Africans, we got the land. We did pay builders to build the house, but we got the land. He's saying that Africans, that, uh, that folks are saying that the, you cannot get free land. Who told him that? Here goes even an, um, a description. Look at this. This is in the Washington Post. Recent article, by the way, right? July 4th, 2020. Ghana to Black Americans, come home. We'll help you build a life here. I want you to recognize that Ghana and other African nations have been saying for a long time, if you return African, diaspora and Africans, we will help you return. Look at this. The government has negotiated with local chiefs an earmark of 500 acres of land near the nation's center for newcomers, carving out enough space for about 1,500 families. I want you to understand that that number has increased. That if you actually return to the continent, you will actually be able to set your roots there. By the way, what if, for example, if people on the continent didn't want you to have your roots there? What if you had to fight with continental Africans for your birthright? What would that matter? That doesn't mean that you're not an African. That doesn't mean you're not an African, even if continental Africans didn't want you to return. That doesn't change who you are. They don't get to erase your birthright. You are who you are. And you ain't who you ain't. I don't know. And you said a lot of things about me tonight, brother. This is my one jab. I want you to take the pigeon feathers off of your head and be clearer about who you are. Look at that messy headdress he got on, Sabetta. Come on now. And let's go further. He showed us something about Sankofa, saying that scholars were saying, well, maybe that symbol was not properly used. What does that symbol? What does that symbol have to do with you being an African? 
even if they even if they said, well, maybe the symbol we saw was not a Sankofa. What does that have to do with you being an African? You are not making arguments. You're not making arguments. And I really think that what you have done, you said you stayed up all night. You should have been asleep. You should have been asleep. Because you've wasted your time, you've wasted my time, and you've wasted the audience's time. You've ignored all the sources I've shown. You haven't even addressed any of them. You said, well, some of these people he mentioned want to go back to Africa. So? So what? These people were Christians. So what? What does that have to do with anything? He's even tried to say, I'm, I went to an HBCU. Anyone in the room knows I didn't. But even if I did, so what? Oh, shit. I see there's more Indians in the building than African consciousness, man. I see there's more Indians. They got legendary top cat winning this goddamn debate. Oh, man, it's more Indians. Arrows is up, God damn it! Arrows is up. Where are my people at, man? Let's get it. Arguments. You're not putting forth a coherent argument. Profanity and words which don't fit together in the same sentence. So now that we got to step up the opponents here. We have to, because the people deserve better. Take this dude's pigeon head wrap off, and let's talk about some real stuff. Uh-oh. <coughs> oh, Three man. That was a solid victory right there. Three of All right, hold on. Hold on, Top Cat. All right, man. Damn, man. It's going down. It's going down. It's going down. All right, so we are at the question and answer mark right now. I'm going to allow Brother Jabari to ask you two questions. I'm going to allow you, Top Cat, to ask Jabari two questions. But before I allow y'all to ask each other questions, I got to come in with the first question. My question for you, um, Brother Top Cat. How do you prove who you are? How do you prove that you are an American Indian without DNA. And the reason I'm asking you this is because if I was to go on all you guys' platform, you, the Hebrew Israelites, the Moors, and all these other people that say, oh, I don't use no DNA, um, I will guarantee you that I will see you using, not when I say you, I'm talking about the groups that I said, I will see you using DNA to get evidence on something or to do research because he who does not do DNA, what kind of research or science that you bring into the people? You got to deal with DNA if you calling yourself a historian, if you calling yourself a researcher, if you calling yourself to bring the information to the people, if you're not using DNA, how can we trust your information? So my question to you, my brother, is how do you prove that you are an African, I mean, that you are an um, Indian American? How do you prove that without using DNA? All right, I'm gonna do like this here. Give me, give me about 30 seconds. I had to go and prove my great grandparents who their parents were. So they made me go back six generations in order to clear the property in Louisiana. That's a long time. Yeah. So it kind of got mad because most black people don't know. But since I have been studying this, and my grandmother made me do it since I was 17 years old, I do it. So they couldn't trick me on nothing. You see? Yeah. If they can trick you, that's how the white man steal. And that's how they have been able to steal. Because if they can trick you and say, it's a loophole right here. Well, you can't prove that you know this your great grandfather, but where is the grandparents? Okay, brother. Um, I'm gonna ask you again because I really I couldn't really hear that clear. So, how do you prove 
that you are in Amer um that you are an American Indian without DNA? How do you prove that? Yes, sir. All right, great question. Uh, well, that was my aunt right there. She's sixty-three years old, and she was just explaining to the people how at seven at the age of seventeen, uh, on our on our land, we said she just uh, well, she was explaining that she had to just uh turn the uh, land over into uh, the uh, this generation land been in our uh, our family almost two hundred years. So she she had to go through six generations to prove to the state of Louisiana. She had to go through six generations and prove, document, document after document, paperwork. I got pictures of the big box to prove who her family was in order for them to uh, succeed, to, uh, to uh, have a land session to bring the land over to the uh, next generation, or else they was gonna take it because they've been wanting this property for a long time. What happens is. Uh, her grandma sent her out there in that uh, grave site and had her jot down all of these people's names, her and her cousin at the age of 17. She's 63 today. And so we know who we are because the bodies are still there. On my mom's side, Cherokee Indian out of Central Texas right there. We still have our land there to, to this day. My grandpa was the first black man to drive buses in, in Houston. Uh, my family is on the Alabama Cushada, uh, uh Reservation. Uh, my second great grandpa, Papa Charlie, Fell down the well at the age of 49 and broke his neck. He was born and buried right there on the Alabama Cassata tribe. On my right. daddy's side, I mean, uh, yeah, okay, because I uh, Jabari said we have more than one ancestor, and I wanted to go through my whole right. history because well, I hold on, brother, hold on, brother. You do know that that's not no proof, right? Everything that you I, just I, said, I, you I do hold on, hold on. You do know that you have not proved anything. Everything you said was hearsay and CSA and that said this and he said that. But brother, let me move on. I asked you the question. Let me go to you, Jabari. Uh, oh, man. When you hear brothers say, talk about Africans and say things like, well, you know, the Africans don't want us. Listen to what they say. They saying bad things about us over here. I do want to let you know, Jabari, that we do the same thing to them over there. If you listen to African-Americans over here, we say the same bad stuff about them. So what I'm saying to you is both sides is confused. Both of us are lost. Both of us still suffer slavery syndrome. Both of us, we we, we have been stripped of our of, of a knowledge of self. So talk to us, brother, about um, Africans. What do you think about um, brothers who talk bad about Africa? How, did, how does that make you feel when you see young brothers doing it too? And, and not only is they young brothers, but they got a following. Top Cat got a following. The legendary Top Cat got a following. I'm looking in the chat and there's a lot of people that follow this good brother. How does that make you feel, brother? I, I, honestly, Sonetta, I, it, it it pains me. It pains me. Um, it pains me that there are individuals who actually would like to actually disconnect themselves from the African continent, the continent that gave civilization to the world, the continent that is the most uh, mineral uh, uh, wealth, the most mineral rich continent on the planet, the continent that actually peopled the world. It, it really pains me when I hear people say that. And I, I, I get to the point where I have to actually acknowledge that I have traveled on the African continent for 20 years, over 20 years. I know that Top Cat has probably never been to the continent of Africa, right? I've traveled to the continent for over 20 years. I have business partners on the African continent. I have friends. I have family on the African continent. And on December 11th, Jabari Osazi will be named a chief in the Cebu region of Ghana. I want you to be clear that one of the things we must do, Sonnet, is we have to get back into dialogue. Just as we were the victims of enslavement, so many on the continent were victims of colonialism. So there are some who have misunderstandings, um, confusion about who the diaspora and African um, are. But whose responsibility is it to reclaim and to repair the, the, the actual fractures that have occurred in the family? We have to do that. 
And all you know, right, we're right. gonna have to go back further than 200 years. Top Cat doesn't even realize, I'm coming to the end here. He doesn't even realize that the piece that he played doesn't even help his argument. He says that his aunt said that he had to go back 200 years. That would take you back to 1821. That would take you back to 1821. Do you, are you listening to yourself? All right, hold on, that's enough. Um, I got a, I got another powerful scholar in here in the chat. He go by the name of Ismail Bey. And Ismail Bey, I think Ismail Bey some, said something that's false. He said, DNA cannot be used by law. Now, I don't know what he's talking about because that's all they use in the courtroom is DNA evidence. I don't understand what, what uh, Ismail saying. Maybe he could call it in and explain more. So, Brother Top Cat, I want to give you the floor, my brother. And um, you have... You can ask Jabari a question, and I'm going to put a time limit on it of two minutes to answer the question, because I see where this will go. This will be a long answer. It probably will. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it so, probably uh, will. What would y'all like, uh, Top Cat? Two or three minutes? Talk to me. Three. All right. Three minutes. You got three minutes to answer it. Um, brother, you, uh, you got the floor. You can ask Jabari a question. All right, Jabari. Um... What are your, um, do you have family in the South? Yes. Uh, do you mind me asking? You? Well, what part? Do you mind I me have family that, I, I'm not sure if I understand what you're asking. You're asking where they live in the South? Yes, sir. What part of the South are they from? Okay. I have family in South Carolina, North Carolina, Atlanta, Florida. Um, I have family all over the South, actually. All right. And uh, are they all uh, African? The people that I call family. Do I start the time now or what, brother? Because you're asking them. You're going to ask them a question. questions too. They're African. Okay, I'm going to start the time now because you're asking them a series of now, questions. Okay, oh, let well, me. I want to, it was like I said, I want to get to the question. Okay, go ahead. That's what I was wondering. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. No, it's on you. Well, yes, they are. And I, and I showed this before. I actually have just a screenshot of it. I wish I could show more. It's going to only take a second. I showed this before. I want you to recognize that. Um, are you seeing this screen, Zonetta? Not yet. Okay, give me one sec. Oh, yeah, I have to do one thing. Okay. You know, Jabari Osazi is an unusual person because I am actually able to trace myself back directly to the continent. Um, we have a lot I of. I see the screen. That, you see it, right? Yes, we have yes. a lot of family. That, um, I'm familiar with this. I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Yeah, well, let me finish. Let me finish. I don't know if the audience is. Yeah, but this. Um, not as you look at this, as you look at this, you'll actually see that I can trace myself directly back to the continent of Africa. And I know that you think that we're just doing DNA. We're not. We're not just doing DNA. Here goes my father here, and here I am here. They misspelled my name, Gambo. It's Jabari Gamba Osaze, born March 25th, 1972. So what I want you to recognize is I am able to actually trace myself directly back to the continent of Africa. I know that there are a lot of folks that might not be able to do that, but I think that DNA is helpful as well. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So my question would be this here then. Uh, how important is bloodline in this conversation and pan-Africanism? Or uh, and, and, and just what you preach? All how right. The time starts. Well, well, brother, when you say he's asked me a lot of questions, by the way, son. No, no, no. This is a question. This is a question. No, I wanted to when try to get to know you, try to get a feel. When you say, when you say, so I have no problem talking back and forth with you. I just hope he's going to give me as much time to talk to you as well. Um, when you say bloodline, I want you to understand that when I show you a lineage, I'm in fact showing you a bloodline. And when they take your DNA, they're in fact looking at your your DNA. I know you're calling it bloodline. But there's no difference between your bloodline, your family tree, and DNA. Those are not different things. These are different ways for us to arrive to the same place, to find out who you were related to. And I'm going to say to you that that list that you just saw goes back a lot further than 200 years. You gave us 200 years. 200 years would put you in the middle of the transatlantic enslavement trade. There were certainly Africans who um, intermarried with native people. I'm not questioning that. I am questioning your fundamental assertion about whether we are not African and that we were, and we are actually the native. 
but there were certainly Africans who intermarried. And I'm going to say something to you, Top Cat. There were people in my family who intermarried with Native Americans. You'd actually see that if you looked at my DNA. But I'm not saying to you that, um, that you're actually not seeing an African in front of you. You're seeing an African who has a wide blend of DNA. And that blend occurred when my family was taken from the continent and mixed with other people that were found in the Caribbean, that were found in the American South, and found in other places. I have family in all of those places. You know, I said at one point, and I think this might be why he asked this question, Sonnetter. I said at one point on your channel that my mother is from Guyana and my father has family in the Bahamas. And they thought that that meant that I did not have any family in the American South. And I think this comes to a fundamental confusion that I see so many people. I'm going with the time, brother. You gave me three minutes to answer. Um, I actually think that this is a fundamental confusion that we see with people in some communities. I have four grandparents, four, and eight great grandparents. They come from different places. That's how that's how lineage works. Showing us one auntie or one grandmother doesn't tell us that you're a Native American. I don't even know if you understand how lineage works. You would have to show me it on all four of your grandparents or all eight of your great grandparents to make the argument you're making. And you certainly would have to go beyond 200 years. That just means that somebody, if we believe that, and I don't know if I do, that someone who was an enslaved African entered married with someone who was native. That doesn't say that you're not an African. But what it does mean is, once again, you're a confused African. And I'm here to disabuse you of your confusion tonight. Time. All right, Brother Jabari. There it is, the time. Brother Jabari, um, I would like for you to ask Top Cat a series of questions and let me know when you want me to start the um, time. Hey, hold on. Mm -hmm. so I get to respond to it. No, sir. It's okay, his okay. time to answer, ask you the question, brother. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, I want to ask, Brother Topcat, have you ever traveled to the continent of Africa? Yes, sir, I have. Where did you go on the continent of Africa? I've been in Nigeria before and uh, in the Middle East. Okay. You went to Nigeria to look for, what, what were you in Nigeria and the Middle East for? I have friends in um, Africa. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I'm, I'm glad that you've yeah. actually... Well, I, I was, I'm sorry, I was, say again? I was living in the UAE last year as well. So, yeah, I know a lot of Africans. The UAE is not in Africa. Well, well, Africa can't keep their people there. Uh, UAE full of Africans. Okay. <laughs> Fa brother Topcat, there are people from all other ethnicities all over the world, brother. They're all, they're all over the world. I don't know. Africa can't keep their people there. What does that uh, mean? Well, the Nigerian government... That piece that you read, uh, Nigeria also, I mean, uh, uh, they also made uh, people money out there. That's why they're trying to bring them in. Listen, the conversation okay. that kind of well, there. You're not answering a question, though. I'm, you're not answering a question. What was the my, question? So my question, I haven't. A I asked you a few questions, and then you're just going on. Here's the question. Here's another question I want you to answer. If, in fact, you have one grandparent who is of native parentage, how can you prove that that grandparent is actually not someone who was an African who intermarried into natives that were here and in fact was a Native American that was here prior to colonialization, prior to enslavement? How are you able to prove that that, that grandparent did that? And what about the rest of your four grandparents that you need to explain to us? You ready to start the clock, huh? I'm starting the clock now. All right, turn on one time. I'll work easy work, bro. I thought your boy really had some of them, bro. <laughs> this has been a cakewalk. Anyway, uh, how do how how can I first off, nobody's African. If we were African, we would know. We have our burial grounds. If we were African, we would know. But see, the colonizer in you keeps telling you that I'm an African. That is a colonizer tactic. OK, just like they told you the white man called you a nigga. He put the Negro on you, put all this on you. Put all these titles on you, Jabari, and these Pan Africans are trying to put African titles on us. Okay, listen, it is, they try to make it like it's so hard. When I know who my mother is, I know my father. 
I know my grandparents. They know their mothers, their fathers. They ain't nobody crazy. But the colonizer will try to make you think you are crazy. Then you got to be what he say you are and what his science tells you. The reality of the fact is if people come from the people in the South, growing up in the South, your family told you who the hell you were. We just met the colonizer recently. My family fought against U.S. expansion. You're not talking to somebody who don't know what's going on. We fought against U.S. I just put OCO in the symbols on the screen. OK, they, the colonizer will try to make you think you're crazy. But your family told you when you were young who you were. A lot of us even know what tribe. But when you went into these systems, this white man system, this pan-African system, they told you you were African. Ain't nobody in, in, in America, ain't nobody parents in their house told them they were no damn African unless they was a part of one of these goddamn colonizer movies. Okay? Now, that is a fact. Okay? So that's how I know that ain't nobody slept with no African. And I don't have no problem with no Africans, bro, but it, that's what I'm saying. My WhatsApp is full of Africans. Cameroon, all of that, Uganda. I'm fucking with them. They love me. You know what I'm saying? I text them. I love them. This ain't that. It, it, it ain't no self-hate or nothing. It's the, the fact that indigenous people around the planet can't be indigenous people ever since colonization. They got this title Africa thrown on them. From the southeast to everything, they come in with this slave story narrative. Where's the African culture at in America then? Where were you at? You had the 13 colonies. We're going to do U.S. expansions. What port you came through? If people was really from all these places, don't nobody have no memory of who they was? What port did you come through? Prove it. Stand okay. on it. Yeah, Can I ask you another question? No, 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 Jabari. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. I'm finished. I know okay. it hurt. They're colonizing in and want to put me in chains. Okay, like I said, my family fought against U.S. expansion. Mr. Colonizer, we're not going in your chains. Okay, we're fighting against your U.S. expansion and this African mind say that y'all trying to colonize our people with. We know goddamn well who our mothers and fathers were and our ancestors knew who they were and they told us and that's how the hell we know. Big bars. Get that colonizer shit out of here. Ain't nobody no Africans over here. Stand on it. Prove it. Oh. All right. All right. Um, Top Cat, ask Jabari your last question. Okay. Uh, um, where we going to go with this? Um, Y'all got to admit, though. Y'all got to admit, Top Cat is battling. Top Cat is not rolling over. Top Cat is not just giving up. Top Cat is shooting bow and arrows at the head of Jabari. Pause. Um, hey, Jabari, you're going to have to go in harder now, man, because Top Cat is here not to play, but to lay down the foundation that the Abos is here, the Abos is in the building, and that we are a force to reckon with. <laughs> yo, yo, did y'all hear me? I said, we are a force to be reckoned with, man. God damn. All right, let's go. Let's go, Top Cat. You want your Barbie go first? I have a question I could ask you. Okay, cool. All right, go ahead. Think about your question, Top Cat. Brother Jabari, go okay. ahead, brother. Okay. I, I, first of all, I need to say that that wasn't an answer to my question. but And I hope that you answer this one. Um, the question I have here is, um, you said that your part of your family is Cherokee. Yes, sir. Can you, can you please account for- Don't um, get in trouble, I'm going to tell you. The, hold on. I'm, I'm, fit. I'm asking you a question. Hold on. You got it. Part of your family is Cherokee. Yes, Can sir. You please account if that is in fact your family, if that is in fact your nation, account for why the Cherokee enslaved the African and tell me when you plan to pay us reparations. Hey, uh, see, uh, this one, the big team <laughs> Smack it up. <laughs> oh, okay, Mr. Colonizer, you might want right, to let him out. talk. Let him answer the question. You ready? <laughs> Top <laughs> Cat, are you ready, Top Cat? Yes, sir. I'm ready. I'm coming All out. Right. All right, turn it one time. So we're going to do it like this here. 
They run around here, the Cherokee. Who are the Cherokee, right? These people who they talking about, let's, let's go back to the late 1700s, George Washington Civilization Plan. That's where you get these five civilized tribes from. 1791 Civilization Plan. It was Scottish Irish people who signed up uh, with the under the jurisdiction of them. It was John Wyatt Jr. I'm going to give you names. Okay, John Wyatt Jr. They came out of the Chickamauga tribe, right? This is that Confederate line going to go through there, Stan Wadey. Uh, and them, they're going to join the treaty party, right? His rival would be John Ross, who was a Scottish Irishman, okay? His daddy name was Daniel Ross. They they were Jacobites. They came here out of the Battle of Culloden, and they were uh, exported over here by, by the French. I have the uh, uh, records on him, the boat that he came on and everything. He traveled out of Baltimore with those colonizers, came down, met a guy named uh, John McDonald. John McDonald was married to a Cherokee woman, a black woman. That, that was the game. The Europeans would marry a, a, a black woman down in the South because we were matrilineal society. So what happened? Uh, Daniel, uh, uh, John McDonald, he, uh, he give Daniel uh, Rouse his daughter to marry. They have a son called John Rouse. He ruled the Cherokee Nation for 40 years. Anybody can pull this up. I'm naming names and dates. These are the people that were signed up with the Confederacy. They will fight the, our people in the Battle of 1812. They were signed with uh, 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 Thomas, I mean, they were signed with Andrew Jackson in the Battle of 1812. Also, that was the 1811 was the year of the Creek War. The Creek Civil War was my people that was a part of the Red Sticks and Daniel Similar. That's how me and Ismail is related through that. All right, so let's walk. We're going to get down now. This is the five civilized tribe. All of them. You're not answering the question. The Cobra family, I'm answering the question. You just don't know history. No. Just listen, brother. Give me my time. Oh, uh, okay. So you got uh, the, the creek is, is is William McIntosh. That's the McIntosh family. They are also Jacobites from the. Uh, uh, they were also prisoners of the Jacobites. So his father, uh, I mean, he have son, uh, uh, Chili McIntosh, and he also had Daniel McIntosh. They were signed up with the Confederates and fought over De La Hoya in the north, uh, uh, which were the Black Creeks. This was in the Civil War. Look up the trail of uh, 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 the blood, uh, uh, the, the trail of blood on ice. All right, they went and fought in the USCTs in the first and second infantry in Kansas and Fort Gibson. Okay, that was after they fought in Fort Gibson after the the, the Seminole War. But these people were not our people. These were Scottish, Irish, European descent who signed up in 1794, created the Cherokee government, and these are the people who went under the jurisdiction of the Treaty of Hopewell, 1781. I mean, uh, uh, Treaty of Hopewell. In 1791, the Treaty of Hosting, 1794, the Treaty of Teleco. That's when they went under the jurisdiction under the uh, 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 U.S. Uh, uh, government. They became citizens in the big time. Boy. Time. They come around here with that time. Time. point. They should have told you who you was fucking with. Time, Take brother. Off. Time, brother. Um, to bring clarity, did you just say that the Cherokees wasn't your people? They was like a white man or something. Just okay, so it was yes, sir. The the, the uh, Scottish Irish people uh, who was Indian ages, they end up uh, 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 coming to, uh, into the tribes, and they end up what they would do is the same thing they did in Africa. No, they no, no. Ask, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. I'm just asking you a question. Are you saying, brother, that the Cherokee people were not our people? Your people? They was white people or something? That's what you're saying? No, the che the Europeans married into the Cherokee tribes and they use the kids as tools to get their sovereignty so they can sign treaties for the uh, Indian. Yes, sir. And they went under the jurisdiction okay. of the United States. Treaty of okay. Hope, uh, Treaty of Hope. Well, you know, well, you know, um, you didn't yeah, yeah. answer the question, he, brother. He hasn't answered any of the questions. You to pretend that none of this actually happened. But the reality is, as one of the five quote unquote civilized tri tribes, Native Americans did, in fact, enslaved uh, enslave African people. All right, so now, who is that guy? That's John Ross right there. No, hold okay. on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Top Cat. The five civilized tribes were deeply committed, here it is right here, to slavery, established their own racialized black codes, black codes, immediately reestablished slavery when they arrived in Indian territory, rebuilt their nations with slave labor, crushed slave rebellions, and enthusiastically sided with the Confederacy in the Civil War. I think that what Topcat is trying to say is that those people are not the real Cherokee. He's the real Cherokee. Is that what you're saying? Uh, you word is trash. And no, I said- Is that what you're picture. saying? I said, no, it's not. I said, go to that picture and you will find out what I'm saying. 
That is John Ross right there. Okay, a Scottish Irish. Go back to the picture. That's John no, Ross. Okay, a okay. Let's Irish. let's 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 go back to the picture. Wait, let's go. Let's go back to the picture. Let's go back to the picture. I told let's you I was going to end up. I didn't know I was teaching players tonight. Y'all should let's go back to the picture. Let's go back to the picture. I want to understand exactly what you're trying yes, to sir. say. I, I don't agree with what you're saying, but I want to understand. I know what, what I'm saying. saying. I thought you just said you didn't know what okay. I was saying. No, no. Uh, so you're, you're, making a convoluted, you're making a convoluted argument. But no, so you're I'm, saying I'm here's. Wait, brother, hold on. You want me to go back to the picture, right? This is John Ross, the Cherokee chief, lionized for his efforts to fight to fight forced relocation. By the way, this is what you said your family did. They fought fought um, uh, European expansion. No, sir. Was also an advocate, was expansion. also an advocate and practitioner of slavery. So I'm trying to understand why you, are you, you saying, are you saying, wait a minute, are you, I'm asking you, you brother, are you saying that the the Cher the people who we say are Cherokees who enslaved people are not in fact the real Cherokees. That in fact your family is the real Cherokee. Yes, sir. Okay, that's what I'm trying to understand. How do you distinguish between I just John Ross and your Scottish. family? I just told you they are Scottish Irish, brother. You heard me the first You're time. You're saying that John Ross is Scottish Irish. Yes, sir. He's Scott, so he's not. Hold all on. right, all right. Here we go. We up to the part now. For the people to call it in, ask your questions. We're not telling you to call in to teach. We already got the two teachers here. Call in, ask a question to whoever you want to ask your question to. Um, I'm not going to let you be long-winded. That goes for everybody. Call in, ask a question. This is not where you call in to debate the person. All right, all right, all right, family. Y'all already know what it is. Powerful debate. Oh, man. Sanchez, I got to get you in here, man. I got to get you in this battle. Um, right now, we're going to bring in our brother, the legendary Top Cat is in the building. Hit that link if y'all have any questions for Top Cat. What's up, Top Cat? Unmute yourself. Top Cat is in the building. Unmute yourself, brother. Unmute yourself. You might have to go. All right, peace, peace. You can hear me now. Uh, yeah, I hear you now. Brother, Um, I want to first say, brother, you was holding your own, man. You were shooting arrows at Jabari head, brother. You was holding it down. And you know? I, don't want, I don't want people to forget that I was a rookie then. Yeah, you were, yeah, you was a rookie right there at that time. That right. was like what four years ago? Probably like two. No, nah, like I think two it, was three, it was three years ago. Three by three years, yeah. Damn, so, yeah, I was, that was my rookie year. Oh, that's when you just came into it, right? Okay, we got we got one person in here. Isaiah, um, do you have a question for Top Cat? Uh, yes, I want to ask ask um he says that we're aboriginal people right but there's people out there that can i can trace my family all the way back to africa uh -oh. with lineage and documents and dna uh -huh. okay what year was this uh my my people well my my people came here i think in like the late 1800s i don't have it all my dad has it all realistically but we came from uh Nigeria to Europe and from Europe to Louisiana. Okay, well, your, your situation, yes, sir. Well, your situation to be a little different, brother. Um, you migrated here. Uh, the, the, the trade embargo act was 1808, okay, which they say stopped the transatlantic slave trade. So you wouldn't even fit in this conversation, brother. You're just a bit immigrant looking for a better life. Look at right, that. Good enough for me. I don't want to do no arguing. All right. Me neither. Thank you. All right. Come on in, man. DMG, come on in, man. Ask a question. I want y'all to be, don't be scared of this rising star in the legendary Top Cat. Do not be afraid of this rising star, the legendary Top Cat in the building. And also, we're going to give it up for our brother Aboriginal Powers in the building. 
What's Shout up, out, man? We got AP in the building, man. Turn it yeah, one yeah. time. What's Uh-oh, up, oh man? Hey, shout out to Top Cat. And I've been telling niggas, uh, Jabari, I told her that the other day behind the scenes. I said, hey, you know, uh, Jabari really got smoked in that debate. And uh, you was like, nah, he didn't. He put it up. <laughs> Even the damn Africans voted for Top Cat. Huh? We got a new champion. Ah, turn up. <laughs> hey, what was this go? What was this go? 54 to 46. Well, right Dang. now. Um, right now it's still going. This that um, it's nah, still- it's over with, man. The debate over with. Sai, you cheat now. <laughs> you <Yeah, laughs> Sai, you both ended that fifteen minutes ago. The debate been over I'm with. In the poll, <laughs> I'm in the poll. The poll had it um, 49, 30, 39. I mean, forty one thirty nine. I think, and um, you had that by one, but now they had it up fifty fifty. So the people gave it a draw now. No, no, nah, nah, we ain't doing that side. That's been over, man. We, I'd have been on the phone with you. I can't really. Yeah, I'm, I'm over here all on the panel taking questions. The debate been over with, man. You know that. Right now, they just trying to save face. Yeah, I can't rig it. It's, it's up there. Yeah, I got a screenshot, nah, though, because you just called me and told me to take a screenshot. And I got the screenshot. <laughs> yeah. I got the screenshot. No, the, arrows, so, and the arrows are up, y'all. We up in here now, y'all. We up in here, y'all. I'm I'm representing the Abos and I'm representing Africa. See that? That's different. AP, man. AP, watch this here. Sai, tell him you with your daddy, P, on your daddy side now, man. He yeah, up here killing with his daddy, yeah. his daddy people them now, man. <laughs> Yo, hey, man. y'all, and hold on, watch this here. Today we offered Sinetta a uh a a flight. Out to Cancun, Mexico. Yeah. We offered him uh Roman. We're gonna put him up in a nice five-star uh resort, uh big pool, big room, big bed with a balcony and the ocean view. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, all inclusive. And we're gonna take him down to the pyramid tour. We're having a pyramid tour in November. Yeah, so I never yeah. say he down to come ride with his, his daddy, cousins, and his Aboriginal Indian brothers, and he will come down there and we're gonna sponsor him. Man, I'm down there. I'm down there. I got the videotape, all of this. You're gonna show me That's the amazing. pyramids in Mexico, right? Right. Well, uh she Ali was uh telling you the other day about uh the source he was using with Chichenisa and the Temple of the Warriors. Well, I'm gonna actually mm-hmm. take you down there so you can see it in person with your own eyes, and you can also film it to bring it back to the family. Okay, that's Dang. what's up, man. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm definitely going. I'm definitely going. This is a free trip. Oh man, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna take care of your daddy, cuz your daddy's side of the family to the good ones. Yeah, we the good ones. We need to come to the world a little bit. Get around the world, man. But yo, man, I'm gonna give you props, brother. You handled your own. I mean, you wasn't shaking, you wasn't trembling. You took on one of our best, our, our best mighty soldiers. You know what I'm saying? Kosa, Kosa, what's up, brother? You got a question? Hey, can y'all hear me okay? We hear you okay, brother. Man, my question, uh, I appreciate what you're doing, man, by the way. Let me start Thank off you, with brother. that. Thank you. Uh, I, Top Cat, I would. My question for you. Hey, um, why do we need DNA and what did we do before DNA to trace our ancestry? Um, all right, Mike, say you can hear me. Mike, yeah, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, this DNA situation, um, <laughs> Which we're going to find out is going to come down through uh, Darwin is also going to come down through a military experiment and also uh, a eugenics program. Right. So the eugenics going to have like a quote unquote third party or a sister organization, which is going to be in control over the people that are going to uh, uh, be the head of African study. Right. So they're going to be in bed together. Don't worry about it. I paint that whole picture. I ain't going to get too much up because one of these pan African might want to run up. But we can't tie that. Every I know I hear it a lot. The CIA was involved with them. Yes, we do understand that a lot of this goes back to World War I. What happened at the time of World War I? 
So you also, uh, well, me and Dan Calloway got a, a, a podcast just dropped, and so I don't want to get too much up. He asked me the same question, but I'll say the the, the 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 Human Genome Project started in 1991. In 1990, it was introduced to quote unquote Black Americans in 1991 through uh, a, a building, and they were building the government building in New York, and they found bombs. Well, that system of, of of genetics didn't work for them at that time. Why? Because they said that they found European DNA down there, but they had African anthropology. And this is why I say science and anthropology writes over the indigenous people's story because they used waste bees. They said they used uh, not they used Nigerian waste bees and caskets facing east, indicating that they were African. And so that's how their their science and this DNA. It allows the colonizer to be in control over the indigenous people's story. Uh, but that's one of the uh, tools how they brought it. So All right. uh, they reached it. Um, Top Cat today. I want everybody to know Top Cat today is filling his own. He is filling his um, legendary status and he have called out the Israelites. Top Cat have called out Gorilla Hebrew. So you know what I do, what I do best, I got on the phone and I called Gorilla Hebrew and Gorilla Hebrew have accepted the debate with the legendary Top Cat. So we're going to be in the making of that. Y'all get ready. This is going to be crazy. Gorilla Hebrew representing the Israelites and Top Cat, of course, representing us and the, uh, the Indians. The natives, the the uh, American Indians. I'm I'm mixed. I'm mixed. I'm African, and I got Native American in my blood. I showed the DNA. That's the difference between me. I show my DNA records. See, so I could back mine's up. I don't care what nobody say. I got Af I got American Native in my DNA. I don't care what nobody say. All the scientists is always saying, take a DNA test. Well, I did that. I got some percentage up in there. All right. So, but see, the difference is with me and them is I don't deny my Africanness. I've always said that we also have African blood. I got way more African in me than the American. So I'm gonna, I want y'all to know that. But I'm not excluding none of that out of my blood. So uh, let me see who I'm gonna go with. Inside out. What's up, brother? You got a question? Aboriginal power. Yeah, I got a and we got the yeah, legendary. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, hey, what's good, family? Um, my question would be if we are the if we're the American Indian, right? It's just a population question. If we've always been here, doesn't it make sense that the uh American Indian population it should be the, the it should have the high it should have the highest population? Uh, in the Americas today, being that we've always been here, if that makes sense, if, if you understand my no, question. No, it don't make sense. Actually, brother, it don't make sense, right? It was no logic in that okay. question. Let me ask you this here, family. Uh, are you from, are you Are you of African descent? Uh, ac according to my DNA, yes. According to your DNA. Uh, well, uh, you know, we know, well, we know uh, to be honest, to be honest, uh, like Sinetta, I actually have, uh, Native American uh, DNA and African DNA in my blood as well. So okay, I, I what about uh, you know, where you from? You sound like you're from the south. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Georgia right now. I'm, I'm at, but I'm at the bottom of Florida though. That's where I'm from. You out of Florida? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So what is, what is it? Do you have any Indian grandmas and any grandparents? Any Indian grandparents? Any of those stories in your family? Yes, sir. I do. Yes, sir. I do. Uh, my, my great grandma. Uh, 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 she was uh, part Indian, though, uh, and, and and I can prove that I'm on my cell phone, but I I could do that. No, 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 we take it now. Yeah, uh huh. Uh, 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 but but see, they was talking about do a do actually uh, why you DNA. My 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 great grandfather who actually married my great great grandmother who's actually part Indian. See, he was adopted, so a lot of people who we thought was a part of our family wasn't even our family. You know what I'm saying? Because he was adopted. So DNA is very important because DNA was actually able to put our real family back together and not with my grandfather's adopted family. So you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I really agree with all y'all. DNA can and genealogy is very important. Put the, 
Okay, well, I agree right. with that. I agree with that. No, I all right, with right that. y'all, let me move on. Because um, okay, all right. I know at 8 o'clock, I have another show to do. And um, that's dealing with the Owaspi guys. They got the Israelites on the goddamn run, y'all. Listen to me <laughs> when I tell you. Um, Neftali entered into the Terror Dome the other day. And um, they went over there. And it was a nice debate between Neftali and one of the brothers by the name of, I think he was by the name of Malik, or one of them. And um, they talking about how they beat Neftali so bad. So you know me, I got on the phone again. And I said, brother, you, 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 <laughs> you taking on the wrong champion. You don't get no props by beating up on Neftali. You got to bring your ass over here to the HOK and take on our champion, take on our scholars. And so he agreed, and the brother is, he, oh, man, this is crazy. He used to be a Israelite, a Hebrew Israelite. He had his own camp. He was out there doing his thing, and for some reason, my brother Selah Shalom converted him, and he is now under the Owaspi guy. So this is going to be real crazy tonight at 8 o'clock. Coming up soon. Let me go to my brother, Real Thought. What's up, Real Thought? Peace, saw uh, Peace, saw uh, Peace. Everybody on the panel. I just got one question for Top Cats, Aboriginal Power, any of you cats that are trying to divide us. What is your goal? And I ain't got nothing else to say. What is your goal? What is your goal? Okay, no problem, brother. My goal is to help out confused people like yourself, indoctrinated people like yourself, with all due respect, to understand that no story or doctrine that you can get from another man that's coming outside of yourself can save you. In order to be in your true power, you have to be a test to your root in order to um, have knowledge of self or be test to the creator that you come from. So all of these doctrines have taken you outside of yourself. And today you don't know who you are, brother. You're very confused. So my end goal is to save brothers like you who are lost and confused in doctrine to tell you to go home and that your family bloodline is the most important thing. And, um, and you cannot get it out of a book. You have to go back and make a family tree, my brother. Family, my family bloodline doesn't come from a book. So when I ask you what your goal is, it can't be about something that's arbitrary on YouTube. It can't be about proving a point to niggas in the debate. My goal. What my type mind, of African are you? Your goal off of the damn computer, because all y'all do is the. What type of African are you? Hold on, hold on, brother. Well, maybe, maybe you got the wrong uh, idea about me, right? Let me, let me let you know, family. I've been on ten tours, ten group tours in one year. Okay, we're about to go down to Mexico. So I know this coming with us. We're doing our first pyramid tour. I've been on like eight. Uh, sing, uh, uh, solo tours all this in the year, brother. We outside Indians, we don't just talk. All right, now what tribe are you from in Africa? <laughs> I'm not from a tribe in Africa. A tribe is something that's very temporary and short term. I don't have a tribe, in brother. Africa. How would you say this? That's how you know you don't come. So, who do you come I from? I don't need to claim a tribe to know who do you name. come from. I don't know where he come from. I know exactly that what it sounds like to me. AP sounds like I, he gets got, he got wait, insecure I, on that one. Stop talking like you know something and listen. I got, great, I got great grandfathers from Ethiopia. I got a father that was born and raised in Jamaica. And he Take your head off. Let us see your forehead. Let, let me finish. His heritage is in Thai, Thai, uh, uh, the Arawak Indians, the Taino. So I understand what you're talking about when you speak about Native American, but you're speaking about a very short term history. The long term history of who our people are is not Native American. Even when you trace yourself to Native Brother, Americans. Brother, we're not Native Americans. Oh, AP, are you a Native American? You can't no, no Yeah, American. I don't know. what this, I don't know. He got the yeah. wrong people, brother. You playing games. Brother, maybe you should come back another day when you know what you who you're talking to. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking to, a fool who's trying to divide our Aborigines, bro. Who's trying to divide our people. Who's trying to divide bro. you, right? Actually, the real goal was, all you said was some YouTube. It's guys. to help brothers out, like confused brothers I'm like you out. This is what I'm talking about. You're not an African, brother. Look at you. You're an Arawak Indian. You're not an African. Take your hat off if you're Ethiopian. You'll see your forehead. 
That's your that self hatred we talking about. Top cat. Yeah, this is self hatred, AP. Why do they hate they self, AP? I know I got Native American heritage, but my oldest heritage is not Native American. It's ancient African. Ancient African. What year? What year? What year? Yeah. Ain't no year. Our people go back 200. So you just guessing on everything, huh? We didn't stop asking you questions. You just going to guess. 200,000 years. You're not going to get give us the best guess you have, huh? Years. Y'all playing games and you know it. I'm, I don't care what the chat say. You no problem, brother. Go the Jets. The Jets games. playing tonight. Yeah. Brother. Go watch the game. Y'all playing fucking games. Yes, All sir. Right. Nigga. Thank, Thank you, you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate the, appreciate the call. Let's go to Joe Martin is in the building, waiting patiently. I already see he in deep thought right now. And um, let's hear from my brother, Joe Martin. What's up, brother? Hey, how you doing, Zainab? What's going on, man? man I'm I'm and, yeah, I got a question for Top Cat. Um, Hey, look, and there's no right or wrong answer to this. I just want to see where your head is at. So I know earlier you said that you don't really deal with DNA. Is that I ain't good? Told you that, bro. You never heard me say that. Okay, no problem. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's what we're here for. I'm objective. So um, now that you made that clear, I guess what I just want to ask you is that um, have you had a DNA test well, as far as your lineage go? Not me, but my family has. Oh, okay. So you said your family had a DNA yes, test. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, no, no, no problem. Look, there's no right or wrong answer to these questions. It's all good. No, so, no, no, because I know. Now I know you think I, I was lying, and I'm just saying something. I know you think I was lying, so I, I want to prove it to you real quick. And Curly and Nanny and my daddy also took it. Okay. Now, watch when I put this name in there. Colbert in there. I'm gonna tell you, it comes up. All right, so this is my family, bro. We do genealogy trees and DNA. This is not something that I made up. This is something that my family teaches, uh, teaches taught me. You feel me? So that's why I'm here speaking today, brother. So I do not dis uh, throw DNA out or whatever you said, brother. Hey, no problem, no problem. So well, what my next question will be is this. Usually what happens in these spaces is that when we hear information, it's imperative that we verify it. You know, this goes into sources, debating, where'd you get your information from? Have you verified? Have you fact-checked it? Just to make sure everything's aligned. So you said your family got a DNA test. Did you yourself take a DNA test to verify? No, sir, brother. That's why I told you my family did, and I didn't say I did, okay? I thought, I thought we answered that. No, so I'm asking you. Did you, did you no, sir. verify? No, sir. So, you don't know, so you don't know if your family was perhaps... You know, mistaken, or you didn't fact check their information. Uh, listen, brother. Listen, let me, okay. So I just told you that we did. She, we're doing DNA, and we also do family tree, where we can cross reference. Okay. So now, by you asking me that, you would, uh, you would be insinuating that that method of DNA actually works. So I want to ask you if it actually works. Then how come you don't know what tribe you from in Africa? Um, well, no one, no don't, one lie. don't lie because there's people in Africa know what tribe they from. Why you don't know? Well, the, well let, me, let me handle this real quick. Well, first of all, I got you. I, it, it's just a lot to unpack. Don't it's okay. Don't worry about oh, it. The, what tribe you from is a lot to unpack, and you got DNA. You oh, coming out here with this magnificent science, oh, brother, and it's not on. helping you. Hold on. What's a lot to unpack is that you assumed that I didn't know what tribe I was from. You don't oh, even know me. We listening. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because that was the question, brother. Anything I, else you're trying to get out of it? That's I don't want to argue with you. Listen, I don't want to argue with you, brother. I just simply asked you, did you verify what your parents told you? And you said no. That's all. That's not you, true, brother. That's not true. I just told you we cross-referenced it. I got okay. you. I'm not here. We go side by side, homie. From my screen, her screen, my screen, we're working. Both of us working off two different screens right there in the conversation is being recorded, homie. I got you. Let me ask you another question. Can you do that? You ain't never oh. done that with your family because you ain't got oh. no family tree. I, I, listen, I don't want us to digress. I just simply ask you. So why you ain't answer my question on what tribe you from? Hold why on, you, brother. Why are we talking about anything except for what tribe you from? Brother, unless you don't know what tribe you from. Hold on, brother. Hold on, hold on. 
I simply yeah, asked. He, he might not know, big brother. I right, that's what it sounded like to me. A one, I mean, AP, and he really trying to get out of that one, boy. He's trying, yeah. he trying to move me over here, and I'm like, damn, where we going? The callers come in to ask you a question, brother. Why yeah, are you answering them? I got you. Can you calm down a little bit? Because this is what happens when we get frustrated. I just simply asked you, did you verify the information that your grandmother or your auntie yes, gave sir. you? Yes, sir. I met the dollars just to cross-reference it with the tree and also <laughs> DNA, brother. And then I made it clear to say there's no right or wrong answer to these questions. I'm not here to fight. You said you didn't verify the information. You have no win if you have no tribe. Okay, no problem. So... Now that we realize that you didn't verify nothing your family gave you. you, you heard some shit, you believed it, and you jumped. Right, up. right, of course. You said that you ain't verify shit. Of course, so right, time, right. Next time he gives you information, understand this guy doesn't verify nothing he fucking <laughs> like the tribe you from, right? Like you, ain't, like you ain't verify the tribe you from. Okay, no problem. Know, like everybody ain't see you duck that question. No problem, no problem. Move forward. Are move you forward. done? Are you done? So, so, Are we done I'm, here? I'm, Brother, you gotta let me talk, brother. You you know I'm supposed to ask you a question, right? I'm not on the seat. You on the seat? I have no you know, problem with that, brother. But I want to be fair. I'm just a fair guy. I apologize. I'm a fair guy, man. I just feel like if I answer your question, then you should be able to answer mine. Cause this is like your third question, and you still ain't answered what tribe you from. You said it's my. Yeah, it's like I'm at this time. I'm begging you, man. I'm on some key sweat shit right now, man. I'm begging you to give me the tribe you from in Africa, brother. Please, brother. I got my hands together. Please, brother. What tribe are you from? Right, rule number one: Don't beg a man for nothing. Well, brother, I'm begging you, brother. What tribe you from, brother? Rule number Please two: Please know what tribe you from. You got too much ego. Shout out to Cyrus Sioux City on the House of Country. Cyrus Sioux City said, "Ain't nothing like a slave with an ego." And right now, <laughs> come and tell you now, boy. If you don't belong to no tribe, I'm gonna tie your ass up and back there in this field and put your ass to pick how hey, you picking cotton. Sure. You don't know who you is. Shit, boy, that shit, yeah, I'm gonna put your ass. I'm gonna tie your ass to one of these trees, nigga. If don't nobody own you, you know how you see a dog in the neighborhood and he ain't got no collar? Yeah, y'all put him in the back in the backyard or go take him to your cousin's house on the other side of town. Let me find out you niggas out here don't know what tribe you is. Then you're a runaway slave, nigga, and you're in my jurisdiction. And I'm gonna tie your ass to a tree. You're gonna be picking sugar, right. tobacco, right. and cotton. All right, we got the black Indian in the building. Let me get the black Indian tie in the building. What's Shut up, up Indian? Is it Tay? <laughs> yeah, what's up, Sai? What's up? What's happening? Black Indian Tay is in the building. What's up, Sai? What's See, happening? You, playing, si, <laughs> you fooling around. <laughs> no, you do it too much, Sai. Nah, what's happening, bro? Oh, so y'all don't do the call? Yeah, you do it too much. I, I yeah, want to ask brother Top Kid a question right quick. Go ahead. What's, on? what's going on, Top Kid? Peace, peace. What's cracking with it, homie? Like, nothing much. Uh, just want to show my respects to you. I like your work and, you know what I'm saying, everything you do or whatever. Uh, I want to ask this question, though. Uh, do you, are you, rec are you familiar with the United Nations, the Declaration of the Indi uh, Indigenous Rights of the Peoples? What you speaking of, the undrip, the age drip? Uh, the little indigenous rights act of 2020 or 2018. That's what he talking about, huh? AP, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he talking about the undrip and the age drip, the uh, United Nations and American Indigenous uh, Indigenous Peoples uh, Act, right? right. <laughs> Are you familiar with that? Yeah, we're familiar. Uh, do you do you do you feel like that tie in like to our people? I mean, uh, legally, um, is it is it is it some areas there? Because one of them is the right to self identify. Um, so, um, and I, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't here to tell nobody which way to go. You feel me? I feel like that's something that that you you should have that conversation you should have with your family. You know what I'm saying? I I wouldn't want to get too personal in there because I don't want to have you make a decision out here. You feel me? I think that's something that's gonna affect you and your family. So I feel like that's who that conversation should be had with. Right. Uh, hey, let me ask you this too. Hey, you you know you started the whole war, huh? Yeah, I was gonna say that to him too. Yeah, bro, you know you started the whole war. Our no, twenty twenty three been turned up fucking with you. You <laughs> came right. on Sidnetta channel before, bro. And they jumped you. And they, they jumped on you. Mind. Yeah, they beat him up bad. Yeah, yeah, and he started a whole war, bro. We went <laughs> to war for months. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember. <laughs> 
I sure didn't know that. Nah, yeah, you set out for war. For, they went on for a month. Uh, AP ended up debating uh, uh, Rob Bourne, everything. Man, we started lining up phase yeah, back to yeah, back, bro. We just been yeah. everything to war. Man, you didn't right. go back and watch some of that tape, and we won. Oh, yeah. You better be an African that won't come up and say we didn't win. Nah, no, that's oh, a yeah, fact. That's a fact. Gotta tap in for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that was my basis of the question. Just wanted to see, like, is that like, is that kind of like the government telling us that, like, that we got like certain laws and you know whatever, but the people ain't really just looking for it. To me. Well, you got a lot of man. The law of land here, man, it's the treaties. You feel me? Uh, right. A lot of people are attached to the treaties. That's why one, one of the, my messages, bro, is go do your genealogy, know your family story, bro, because a lot of these things you haven't heard inside here. If you're here today, that means your people was here then. You feel me? So you have a story, man. We got to tap back into these things. A lot of things were owed to us. Contributions, man. There's a lot of things that we're missing because we've been attached from our stories because we've been given doctrines by people who are not even from America. Most of these people come from the Caribbean that started a lot of these ideologies. No disrespect to the Caribbean brothers and sisters. We love y'all. But a lot of the colonizers that had European blood came over here and created these doctrines. And so, uh, yeah, and, and, and pulled people away from their roots. So, Nah, man. Um, yeah, that that's what I say to that, man. That's why it's important because you had a, these treaties. So I take take for instance the eighteen sixty six treaty, which after the Civil War in Indian Territory, we defeated the last uh, uh, uh <coughs> general for the Confederates, Stan Wadey. Now right. eighteen sixty six, they gave us a treaty, and let's use the creek for example. They got one hundred and sixty acres. They had the opportunity to create their own indigenous government outside of the mixed races because they never, their governments never were together. People still have that power today. That's why they're going to court now, trying to get the eighteen sixty six treaty removed, but, but they can't. That's why the Dawes Act, the Curtis Act, and now the Reorganization Act, and all those acts that came to follow, 1979, they kicked out the, the, the Black Creeks that was in the tribe, reconstituted their constitution. But if people don't know their history and don't know who their great grand their parents are, or their inheritance, or what, what you attach to, to the yeah, these, yeah, it's a lot of legal uh, remedies here for people, but you have to know your story to know what was actually done to you so you can actually find a resolution to it right so so in the in a, in a whole nutshell basically the best thing to do is just start with knowing who you is going down your generations of your family and just you know find yourself in the story correct right, right. with your family and see what's the best decision for y'all to make you know what i mean in real way, and you need to come tap in, bro. Go follow AP, man, and come follow me, bro. You need to come through, bro. We're gonna get you right. Yeah, oh, for yeah, sure. for love, sure. Love for sure. You on the platforms, bro. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, family. We got revolution, revelation. <laughs> the building, man. What's going on, revelation? <laughs> Question for the peace, for the peace, legendary peace. top cat. Peace to everybody on the panel. I ain't here to start no trouble, sir. I'm I know, cool today. I, know. I just got to let the people know when they hear this. Uh oh. Just be on your P's and Q's, man. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, this nigga like a whole mind. <laughs> oh. What's up, Top Cat? What's up, Top Cat? You good? What's up, my Mayan brother? Yeah, you my, you, you my Indian brother as well. I actually have a grandfather, you know. His name is Tashun Kawitiko. He's an, a, a Lakota born. You know, I don't know if you know anything about the yeah, 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 yeah. I do, I do. Shout out to them. All right, you know what the so You know what the shunka witiko means, right? Now I don't know what it means. Okay, no. Okay, okay. Well, that's Chief Crazy Horse. You know, once you're familiar with it, that's actually the Chief Crazy Horse, the shunka witiko. But my question to you is this: You said that a lot of the colonializers came with. That doctrine, I'm not really sure of the doctrine that you're talking about, if you can let me know. And you said that they came from the Caribbean. Well, I'm from the Caribbean. So I was actually wondering if you can just name one for me, my brother. Oh, just okay. one of these yeah, people no, that no came problem. with Well, let's go with that. Let's let's uh -huh. start with the uh the commandment keepers with the Hebrews. Let's start with Marcus Garvey in the UNIA. Yes, sir. Let's start with uh uh Cyrus that, that started the African Brotherhood in Harlem. Uh, let's okay, start with hold the, on, the hold on, hold on. Okay, what was the doctrine? Okay, okay. Thank you. Top Cat. What uh, was the doctrine that Marcus Garvey brought that 
Can't I know, but, but okay, so when you say that they brought this doctrine to the people that colonialized the people, you're saying Pan Africanism colonialized the people? Is that of I don't course, know, without I'm, a shadow of a doubt? I'm trying to understand you, my brother. Yes, sir, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, Pan Africans colonized Pan the people, colonialized the people. Yes, sir, brother. The black church okay. left America. Hold on, I can help you out if you need me to help you, right? Why do I say that? Because yes, even in the origins of what this this commercial trade that they, they attempted to create, right? So you had a brother named Thornton back in France. They sought out Paul Cuffey, which was an Indian. Right there, those Massachusetts Indians in New England, they were shipbuilders, okay? They were map makers. They traveled the seas. They sought him out. Uh, he came over, helped them create uh, uh, Sierra Leone Company. After the Sierra Leone Company fell, which they was out there enslaving the people, I had the records and the letters that Paul Cuffey wrote saying, y'all need to pay these people, right? So after that, the African institution picked it up. The African institution picked that project up. That's where you get your Sierra Leone. We'll talk about that another day because all that colonization. But they uh, also sought out Liberia. Now, at AME Church went over to Sierra Leone. They brought a guy by the name of Daniel Coker, C O K E R. Okay, they took Christianity there. They also took the Miracle Liberians, brought Christianity with them to Liberia. Correct. Uh, all of this was a Christian movement, brother. Or uh, the Pan African. We go to the 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 uh, the, the six Pan African conference. They say they found uh, religious uh, freedom throughout Christianity, uh, religious uh, uh, revolution through Christianity. That's why Jesus is sitting in the front of your AME church. That's why when they called up Africa, when okay. Sylvester Williams was out there, you had a brother there in representation of the AME church. Now, why in the hell would the AME church be worried about some Europeans carving up Africa if they ain't getting the cut of the play? Yes, brother, this is all a, a psyop, okay? You've been bamboozled. Good wink. Hey. I hear you. I hear you. But you are to understand that Marcus Garvey, his entire was movement a was Hold on, hold on. I hear you. I hear you. And I respect your opinion, brother. But at the, at the end of the day, it doesn't refute the truth and the facts. Garveyites had nothing to do with, with being colonialized. As a matter of fact, they wanted to leave the colonializer and go to Africa. Marcus Garvey was talking about having the United States of Africa, you know, which which was actually against Basically everything that the colonializers was for. So yeah, that was a scam. He scammed, he scammed the people. Garvey scammed okay. the people out the money. Garvey scammed them. Uh, not only that, uh, but um, when we use Garvey, Garvey worked with the Klan. Garvey, I showed worked with uh, Severe Cox and uh, and others. Uh, no, Garvey, this brother. wasn't Garvey's oh, no, idea. This not Garvey's Please. idea, brother. No, what Jim Henry Clark say? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you, you now? You're saying a lot of things. I know that he did a meeting with the Klan, but Garvey wasn't part of the Klan. Brother, I, I just things. showed you. Go watch the debate. I just I just beat up Jabari with the same information. Maybe you need to just rewind the track. Yeah, but you, brother, you're saying he's part of the Klan or he had meetings with the Klan? Which brother, one? I said he worked with him. He got his check signed by niggas who, who was the 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 um the leaders of, of some uh, of the um a white party at that time. And you don't see Anglo-Saxon Black Star Club, Line. Right? Okay, but I hear you. And we're, we're not Europeans arguing. You pay for the Black Star you. Line. You. you had I'm a sorry. White Star Line. What about the White Star Line? What company owned talk the about Black that. Star Line? What company yeah. owned it? That's what I'm saying. Europeans, this, that wasn't Garvey Boat, bro. This was Europeans. Are you really telling me y'all don't know this? Bro, that wasn't bro, his boat. Purchased. Yeah, but if the Europeans own okay, the boat, let me say this here. Let me ask you this here. Then he's gonna did Garvey go to man. Africa? Have Garvey ever been to Africa? Never. He's never been to Africa. Okay. But so why? See. Okay. How is your greatest African revolutionary fighter gonna fight for Africa? He ain't never been. You know why? Barclay and Liberia said he wasn't coming. They wouldn't let him in. Why they ain't let him in? They didn't agree with his style of Pan Africanism. Which, which your Pan African teacher didn't tell you that there was two whole different forms of Pan Africanism at that time. Okay, I will help y'all a lot with that though in the debate when I knock whichever one of y'all decide to be the sacrificial animal to get up there and get knocked out. Right. <laughs> All right, a hey, hey, top cat. brother. I love your energy, and we're gonna have to agree to disagree, top cat. But I hear you, sir. No problem. It's all good, Revelation. Hey, top cat. We're gonna have to wind this thing down. I got another show coming up at seven. I got the Owaspi boys will be in the building and they um they gonna go in, y'all. So stay tuned and close us out, Top Cat.
You got right, this piece. Oh man, shout out to everybody in the building. Appreciate y'all coming through for one. Uh, most of all, appreciate y'all honesty, right? Y'all just seen Mayweather get set down on his pockets and the new heavyweight champion of the world, man. Let a pan African come get some get back. Uh, appreciate you, sir. Everything you do, man. Keep on pushing, man. Um, and salute to everybody in the building. Shout out to my homie AP, man. Y'all go follow us, man. Big old Indian business, man. It's our time. We up. Peace, y'all. I'm out of here. Peace to everybody that came in. And um, rich, man. tune in for the next show. We out. Peace. Peace to my brother, Real Thought, man. I seen you and Smash up in here going in, Real Thought. Yeah, peace, man. Overnight, we was going in. It ain't yeah, all about see, commit, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and I also seen you discussing with him about the, um, the music. You know, you was like, oh, it's going to be hard to... Top this. <laughs> so when I tell you, so from the bottom of my heart, when I tell you, I done wrote three songs for your channel already. I'm trying to put an EP together and I'm going to send you five songs. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a question. Do you know how to put a, um an album together? If I was to send you my music, do you know how to put it together? You talking about like mix and master and make it uh, all one cohesive project, like with the sound? Yeah, something like that. Like, let's say, like making an album. Like, put all the songs together. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I send you all the music, do you know how to put them all together on one album? Yes. It could, be, part, could, it could be two albums or two CD, two discs. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I got too many songs to go on one. So it could be like a, a two disc joint. I mean, the way the way it is now, everybody mixes and masters, and then they bounce it right out of the software, and it's just a it's just a wave file. So if that if that's what you need, I got you a professional engineer for that. I can link you with him. All right. So, um, what if I have fifty songs? I don't want to put all fifty in one. Nah, you know, what I'm saying? right? That's what I'm talking about. It got to be like so this they one, the this attention span for that. Say that again. These youngers ain't got the attention span for that. You want it to be like. 10 songs each tops maybe that, 12 that's songs what i'm each. talking about that's what i'm talking about yeah. yeah okay so yeah text me your email let me know what's up man all right okay. is your is your number the same as it was what's the last what's number you? what's the last four numbers i would have to go hold on i got you i got you one second yeah let me know and then i'll tell you and then i'll hit you with the number in my email if you ain't got it all right last time we spoke it was on Last time we spoke, he was on Hotmail. Hold on, I got you. I was on Hotmail? No, yeah. sir. I never had no Hotmail. Oh, no, I'm saying that that's what I sent you. Oh, oh, okay. And then you responded off the off the Yahoo joint. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I got you. Ronnie Williams, hit me up in the email, man. Hit me up in the email, brother. Hit me up in the email. Oh, this shit. Sa at yahoo.com. Yeah, this was an um, old debate system, lady. This was an old two-hour, two-year-old, three-year-old debate. But a lot of people didn't see it, so I replayed it. That's all. All right, so the number you gave me was it ended at 7147. Yeah, that's an old number. So, yeah, hit me up. Hit me up in the um email. I'll send it to you. All right, I'll hit you up on it. I got you. All right, peace, brother. All right, Joe. Peace, everybody. Safe. Love y'all, man. Y'all be good, man. We out. You know, I gotta go out, man. To me, um, this is my this is my latest song right here, and I'm loving it, man. I'm loving this shit. I'm feeling it. I like the vibe to it. I like the vocal sounds of it. This is my this is one of my my good ones, my top one so far right now. Oh, you didn't know? This environment tough. Oh, you didn't know? This environment tough. Oh, you didn't know? This environment tough. It's just the beat is catchy. Don't, 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 don't. That should make you, don't it make you bop your head? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Don't it make you just bop your head and you caught up in the moment with it? Yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let's get it. Oh, you didn't know? It's environment tough. 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 Oh, you didn't know? It's
get in colleges If you read from the Bible, obey the commandment and know who your mother and father is Tune in to Sinetic, cause he the protector of the gods I'm talking about Dr. Benjamin, you of Jack Cannon and John Henry yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the scale of my eye, if he light as a feather, let's go on where it's hard I am the shrine of Patah, you can say I am, better recognize a god All I see is pseudos and frauds, kudos to my dogs I'm sick judo for you frogs, I think it's time to hop off the environment Oh you didn't know, oh, you didn't know. it's environment oh, tough Oh you didn't know, it's environment 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 tough Commit, acknowledge on the rise Raising consciousness divine To the truth we subscribe Jabari leading the way Shaka I'm most gonna play So I never done open the gates And up and banging the day It's the family for the culture Rebuking all your vultures Some environment full of soldiers Unlock your mind, they'll expose you H.O.K. as a squad Debating the truth is a nod Watch how you step in the pod Or the tear you apart Afunation.com, yo, that's my sister right there and her husband. They produced this song. Make sure you support the website. Go and check her out. Support her and her husband. Make sure y'all show some love to my sister. They are very talented in many ways. In many ways, trust and believe me, I already got three songs from them already. Fire. Love it. I love it. All right? So, yeah, yeah, all that. All that. So go and show some love and support for those who show support for us. Always remember, y'all, Sarnetta is one of the greatest chess players on and off the board. Don't be so quick. Oh, Sarnetta's an Indian now. Sarnetta's an Indian. I will never deny my Africanness. All right? I will never denounce my Africanness. At one point, I got mad and upset that the Africans wasn't showing us no love and no, you know, didn't come out and march. And I went ham on them. Y'all know I lose my mind sometimes, man. I get crazy with it sometimes. But right after that, I came back and apologized, calmed down, because one of our young brothers got killed. And so when the police come out and kill an African, Amadou Diallo, y'all remember that, 41 shots about 15 years ago, right? 41 shots. We came out there deep. Dr. Khaled led the way. And we came out there deep in the protest for him. But when one of ours would die, um, what's my man's name? What's the little shorty name with the hoodie, the gray hoodie? Oh, man, what's his name? Come on, y'all, help me out. Y'all know I got some memory shit lost there. Help me out. With the hit, with the um Skittles, I think it was Skittles and all that. What's my man's name? What's my young brother's name? Rest in peace to him. You know, like when he passed away in, by George Zimmerman and um, Trayvon. Thank you, Trayvon Martin. Thank you. We came out deep, but I didn't see no Africans. And I was mad. And I said, God damn it, we ain't no goddamn Africans. We ain't no damn Africans. I was mad. The hell with Africans. But I came back after I calmed down because the love that I had for my people, I wanted to see a strong outcome, a strong push where we back these goddamn crackers up off of us. And they, there was a no show. I was mad. I was upset. And they try to use that on me all the time. I always tell the truth. Yes, I said it. I remember um, I did a show not too long ago last week with my brother Aboriginal Power. And I think he asked me that question, if I'm not mistaken. He asked me that. People always try to throw that at me. And I don't run from it. I run to it because I like to clear shit up. I like to let people know, yeah, I said that. I don't run from that. I, could, I, I do my best to be as honest and transparent as I can. But people have lied so much on me. People have told so many stories. They said niggas running around talking about Sarnetta had a brown van. He owned a brown van, and he was doing all kind of crazy stuff in the brown van. 
His mother molested him. All kind of stupid stuff like that. I don't respond to all of that nonsense. I have never had a brown van a day in my life. Never. If I did, prove it. Show it. But nobody does that. What they do is go look online and get a picture of a brown van. And guess what the niggas do? They will put my logo on the brown van. And dumb, deaf, and blind niggas don't understand what edited videos are. How you can edit it stuff. Anybody could take anything. Like, you see my background? They could take this right here and put me somewhere else and say, yeah, Sarnetta did that. Look, here go his logo. Here you go. Here go the logo. You see Sarnetta Studios right there on the side? And niggas were, oh, man, word, bro. That's what happened. And so they would put my face on it, and they would make it like I, I was there. Like one nigga, he said, yeah, Farrakhan saved me from being drugged out and made a made it look like it was my Facebook post. Niggas will do anything. Y'all better stop believing in this crap that y'all see on the internet. Understand, this is the internet. Unless you hear me say it, unless you can go into my archive and see it, then you say, okay, yes, he did it. Whatever happened to prove, show and prove, whatever happened to that now? You don't have that no more with the internet. I I'm going to say it again to y'all in case y'all ever come across something like this. I have never owned a brown van. I have never had a friend that had a brown van. I have never driven or gotten in a brown van. Check. These niggas is crazy. These niggas is crazy, man. They do all kind of stunts to really try to mess your name up because of jealousy, enviness. It's just sick when I'm the most transparent brother on YouTube. Y'all can ask me any question you want, and I will be as honest as I can on YouTube. Stop listening to the naysayers. You know, if this is one of my enemies, how can you get information from somebody who's hating on your brother Sarnetta? Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Like a nigga like Shaka Doodoo. A nigga like Big Nose Shug. How do you, uh, uh, a bitch like Funky Throne, how do you get information from the enemy against your brother? It don't make sense, right? The hate is real. You can come to me and ask me anything you want, man. That Why you think, let me tell you something. Y'all know I'm not lying when I say this. Why do you think I always say, and Aboriginal Power will back that up. Anybody on YouTube will back it up. I always say, yo, put me in your hot seat. I love the hot seat. I want to go in the hot seat. You know why I say that? Because I know when I go in the hot seat, they're going to ask me all of those dumb questions, all of the questions with the people been lying for days, and it gives me an opportunity to clear it up. If you go in there, you will see I've been saying the same thing over and over and over on anybody platform that's when you know you're telling the truth. When you say the same thing over and over and over. It's like niggas is happy if I had AIDS. Negroes is happy if I had AIDS, y'all. Oh, that nigga got AIDS. He happy. Oh, we happy. No, I don't have no AIDS. I have what is called lupus. Lupus is also a, a autoimmune disease. It attacks your immune system. Check. That's what it does. And I went as far as because my lady was telling me, yo, you know what? Let's just go, go to the hospital and get a test. I go to the hospital, get the test. I show the test to every goddamn body. Do you think they will take their videos down after they see my goddamn test? No. They are not going to take it down. So it's damn if you do and damn if you don't with these niggas, man. You know who else I found out who had lupus? Um, I'm watching this video one day. Nick Cannon. Did y'all know Nick Cannon had lupus? I'm watching the video and I see something pop up and it was about Nick Cannon 
and lupus. And I was like, oh, shit. Nick Cannon got lupus? Did any of y'all know that? Yes. Okay, yeah. Dulcinea said yes. Lady said yes. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. When I seen it, I was like, oh, shit, my brother. <laughs> he got lupus, too. You know, not laughing at his situation, but laughing like, because, you know, lupus, and this is what my doctor was telling me, lupus is really a female woman disease. Did y'all know that? Let me see if y'all knew that, because that's what my doctor was telling me. Very rarely does a man get it. So it's really a female disease. But now you can't say that now. Because I'm starting to look at some men popping up with lupus. Yes, Tony Braxton as well. You know? Yeah. So, yo, listen. Stop listening to the naysayers. Some niggas talking about, oh, if Polite found guilty, your career is over. What? No, the hell is not. That's Polite. In any way, especially a Hebrew can never say nothing like that. Because in the scripture, it says what? One man sins, you can't sin for another man. It's all in them. They got to do all of that. I'm not, I'm not no damn polite. I was not with no damn polite. I'm not holding the girl. What the hell is wrong with y'all? I have a daughter, man. Huh? I have a daughter. I love women. I would never do nothing crazy like that to a woman. You know? Violate her in such manner like that. Never. So polite got to stand on that shit. Not Sarnetta. Just because the nigga been on my platform and I interviewed him a few times, you want to blame Brother Sarnetta? No, nigga. That's where all the haters come at now. That's where all the hating niggas starting to come. You know? And so, anyway, let me get up out of here. I got to, oh, shit, damn, four minutes to eight o'clock? Peace and black power. I'm out of here, y'all. Let me get out of here. Get ready to set this up.